right, everybody. Uh, welcome. How are you doing? Uh, I want to say in advance, uh, this the live stream is for mature audiences only, so viewer discretion is advised. Uh, and how are you doing, David? I'm pretty good. We're just getting back from the monster truck and tractor rally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Saw Truckosaurus versus Fordzilla. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that goes beyond my skills. I can't talk like that. So I will just drop it here right now. Uh, but thanks, everybody, and welcome. And um, thanks for joining us uh, on America's most watched uh, live broadcast, uh, at least on this channel. And <clears throat> um, today we have a very special show that will be very, very friendly and good. What do you think, David? I think that's going to be the greatest live stream ever. Oh, absolutely. 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 Uh, God bless America. And with that said, uh, so what do we want to talk about, David? We, uh, <clears throat> there is a famous clip from Muhammad Hijab that, ha that, that we've shared and which uh, we've shared widely. And when, when I uh, initially shared it a long time ago, uh, I pointed out that Hijab's position in this video was not that it's okay to have sex with a five-year-old. But he was saying to people who just believe in the Quran, Quran only Muslims, that if you just go with the Quran, you would assume that you can have sex with a five-year-old. And so his point is you have to go outside the Quran to learn that that is a bad idea. So I, I pointed that out, but people have circulated, uh, you know, people running around saying that, you know, uh, hijab says it's okay to have sex with a five-year-old. No, he's saying you would conclude that if you just go with the Quran. But we wanted to have an actual video where we go through the entire clip so that people can't say we're taking things out of context or, or distorting what he says. And what's important is he doesn't just stop there. He also goes on to the topic of wife beating and makes claims about what you would conclude if you just went with the Quran on the topic of wife beating. And that's uh, it's uh, that's every bit as horrifying as what he says about the Quran allowing sex with five-year-olds and concluding that it would be halal for a Quran only Muslim to have sex with a five-year-old. Um, so anyway, we wanted, we wanted to, we want to be fair and look at all of this in context because much like reading, much like going to the, the Muslim sources, it's actually worse when you read it in context, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, it's the same thing for watching a video of a uh, hijab here. Fantastic. Yes. I believe you have just summarized what we are going to do. I wasn't paying attention because I was reading the chat. Just, just trust me. I, I crushed it. I trust you. Um, so, um, with that out of the way, so today we want to look at that video that we are talking about that David just summarized, I believe, as far as I uh, as I trust him. I really need to get rid of this hat. It feels very uncomfortable right now. <clears throat> All right. Mamas, don't let your babies grow up to be cowboys. <laughs> oh, now I have a thing on my forehead, just like uh, those heavy Muslims yeah, they, when they... Yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> the Zabi what is it zabiba i forget <laughs> when they go down on the ground yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a name for the... it i think yeah it's something like know. biba or something i, haven't, I, haven't I don't even it. know the name i don't even know that that sounded like hallelujah i don't even know that when, um, when you to you totally know when they got like a big one you totally know it's deliberate right like these guys are yeah, like of course, banging of course. their head on the floor they're like, you see you of see course. i was part of a religious community where uh that was considered um that was considered undesirable and actually an kind of a a shamelessly inappropriate act we were we were not supposed to do that and and we were often given the examples of uh certain muslim uh groups movements like the salafis the wahhabis who tend to do such things very uh you know very very deliberately who try to show off how pious they are and how much they are they devote themselves to worship that they rub their foreheads on the ground on the thing yeah. and and then get these these idiotic marks on their forehead and, and and it's interesting because again i just pointed out in my recent ramadan video uh these are people who claim to follow jesus and he has this entire section in the sermon on the mount where he condemns fasting that's meant to be seen by others and then you've got you've got uh, of course that that's all of ramadan is one big fast that's meant to be seen by mm -hmm. others like the entire world you have to let them know but right before that he has a section on prayer and wanting to people know uh, wanting people to know that you you pray so that they can see how how holy and righteous you are and uh so muslims claim to follow that guy jesus and they're literally banging their heads on the ground so that even when they're not praying they're walking around you're like oh that guy's so faithful look at how much he prays he's got this big 
this big bruise, this constant bruise on his face. This beautiful bruise. Look at that. Oh, so, so holy. <laughs> but you're being very unreasonable, David. If they don't have that bruise up there, how will Allah know that they're uh, praying a lot? Correct, correct. I stand correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, you stand correct, of course, as, as always. So, um, yeah, with that said, uh, God, my oh, so, 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 just so everyone knows the, uh, just my... so everyone knows the context here, Muhammad Hijab encounters some Quran only Muslims at Speaker's Corner, and he's going to tell them why Quran only Islam is so bad, and then this is this is what happens. So you're explaining the context here as if as if we are being we're taking the sting out of context and being islamophobic and whatever so terrible 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 and uh, this is going to sound quite scary for you right now uh-huh uh -huh, yeah this is i don't know why it auto plays immediately but uh <laughs> is there a specific uh part that you wanted to go to before we just jump into it or? no just got to go through the whole thing man there's two main the there's thing. two main sections hijab saying that if you just go with the quran you would conclude that you can have sex with a five-year-old and then the second part, all in the same video though, but the, the, then he gets to uh, claiming that, uh, well, well, you'll see what he claims about wife beating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran whatsoever. It's found in the Sunnah and in fact, and in fact, <laughs> if you look just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. No. And I'll just tell you why. And I'll give you, I'll... If you just read the Quran, you would you would get he says you get the indication, right? Like like it's not just <laughs> he says the takeaway message if you just go with the Quran is you can have sex with a five-year-old. That what when he says that Muslims all alhamdulillah, great point. When we say, <laughs> Oh, how dare you say that, you liars, you see the Islamophones. So th th this would this would be a good uh, answer to the question whether the Quran is dangerous or not, which is why I titled the stream like that anyway, uh, where you could argue that the Quran is a dangerous book to read and to follow, because if you just read the book as it is and you take its instructions, then you could, for example, in this first example, uh, do all kinds of very terrible sexual interactions, right? Yeah, and that's and that's only the beginning here. Yeah, yeah. So, so notice, notice what he's saying is because this is this should be very, very disturbing. If, if I mean, it's only going to get worse. But uh, <laughs> saying, hey, you just if you just go to this Quran, you're going to conclude all of these horrible things. That's why you need all of these additional sources to go to, and so on. So it's like, wait, you're 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 God's eternal speech, His perfect eternal speech. Has to you have to go outside of that to get all sorts of clarifications that would tell you don't have sex with a five year old. You have to go elsewhere. Um, but here, here, notice the problem. Let me let me read a couple quick quick verses. There are way more, but I'll just give a couple of examples. Here's the problem: the Quran claims to be perfectly clear. Surah eleven, verse one. This is a book whose verses have been made firm and free from imperfection, and then they have been expounded in detail. There, the the Quran verses are. Firm and free from imperfection. Well, if Allah makes it sound like you can have sex with a five-year-old and you can't, then I, I would say that there's an imperfection there. 12.1, these are verses of the clear book. 15.1, these are the verses of the book and of a Quran that makes things clear. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, David. Hold on, you are not interpreting those verses correctly. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah, th th there is there is a reconciliation that they need to address here. Uh, but uh, uh, so twenty four forty six certainly we we have revealed clear communications. Twenty six two these are the verses of the book that makes things clear. Twenty seven one these are verses of the Quran, a book that makes things clear. Twenty eight two these are verses of the book that makes things clear. And fifty seven nine he it is who sends down clear communications upon his servant that he that he may bring you forth from utter darkness into light. Now you do have, in addition to all these, Surah 3, verse 7, which says that there are unclear things in the Quran, but the standard the standard method of reconciling all these passages that say the Quran is perfectly clear with the claim that there are unclear things, the standard reconciliation for Islamic commentators is that Allah is perfectly clear in his commands, but there are, you know, theological claims that you're a human, you just can't get your mind around. Uh, but we'll notice the passages that 
hijab is going to be talking about are, are commands about marriage and divorce and wife beating and so on. And he's saying that these are so hopelessly unclear. You think you can have sex with a five-year-old and, and as we're, again, as we're about to see, do much worse to her. Well, the, 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 the actual context here is, uh, of course, you as an Islamophobe would misrepresent this, but it's actually that um, when, it, when the Quran says that the Quran is very clear and perfect and easy to understand, then it means it is clear once you clarify it. Yeah, it, is I... clear, it is clear once you go to the uh, correct scholars who understand it the right way and clarify it according to the correct opinion of the specific correct scholars that's when it's clear isn't that interesting by the way allah in his eternal speech is constantly bragging that he's so incredibly clear you can't miss the point and then you've got his followers who come along and ah well what allah really means in all these verses is this other thing and we have to go to all the sources and we have to go to the various schools of islamic thought to figure out what in the world he's even talking about and if you just go with allah's perfectly clear speech you would come to some really really horrible conclusions yeah, yeah. Ali, Ali here said, he pointed out, uh, God should have said it was kind of clear. So Allah should, could have said it's kind of clear. But Some of this is somewhat clear. Yeah, it's a little bit clear. It's a little bit clear. <laughs> I just noticed that uh, David the Dizzle titled himself Super Genius here, which is, of course, amazing. Total humility going on here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I'm saying this and I'm going to back it up with evidences. Awesome. Let me repeat my point. We both agree that it's haram and it's wrong to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. Okay, good. My premise today, my thesis today is as follows. It's guaranteed. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. At all. But is in fact found in the Sunnah. Sunnah. Okay, and listen, if you just read the Quran, it is halal. It would just it would be halal to have sexual oh, wow. intercourse with five years. Tell me how and why. Yeah, so the statement is very clear here. If you just read if you read only the Quran, it would be halal, permissible, without objection, without problem, to uh, have sex with a five year old, for example. Yeah, and what well, by the way, why the I mean uh, this is a side note, but uh, I've talked about this uh, in the past where um, when Muhammad accused um, Christians and Jews of uh, deifying their priests and rabbis, he was actually challenged by someone. Someone said, hey, what are you talking about? They don't worship their priests and, and rabbis. And the response was, when they let their priests and rabbis overrule what Allah has said about halal and haram, you're worshiping them. But notice what hijab is saying here. He's saying, yes, if you just read Allah's speech, then you would conclude that you can have sex with a five-year-old. We have to go outside that to to human beings to human beings to tell us that that is that is unacceptable wait a minute he just said uh, according to what allah says it's halal sex with a five-year-old is halal you go at, you have to go outside you have to go to muhammad and his companions to find out that you can't you shouldn't have sex with a five-year-old that it's actually haram and so what's what's that mean it means that whoever you are listening to besides Allah, you have worshipped that person, not according to me, according to Muhammad himself. So everything he's saying right now, according to according to his prophet, everything he's saying right now is shirk. It's yeah. total shirk. So one thing to clarify for those who uh, come in and who don't uh, understand the point here is we are very well aware that Muhammad Hijab, like many other Muslims, uh, do not believe it is uh, you know, permissible to have sexual relations with a five-year-old girl. He believes it is not permissible. He thinks it is impermissible, but only impermissible because it is uh, explained as impermissible by secondary sources outside of the Quran. And he here comes and explains that according to the Quran, there is no such thing. According to the Quran, it is entirely permissible to go and have sex with a five-year-old. And you have to rely on explanations outside the Quran, aside from Allah, uh, in order to understand that you can't actually do that. So other sources, secondary sources, have to... <laughs> clarify the point because the primary source of your uh, of your religion the eternal word of allah gives you a huge misunderstanding and makes you do abhorrent things if you only follow that and that by even by islamic standards even by the uh, interpretations of muhammad uh, would be equivalent to worshiping 
their prophets and worshiping their scholars because they have to take their scholars and their prophets' words uh, to rule, to overrule um, things that Allah says in the Quran. And that's, uh, that's shirk. And that's the problem. And with that, we have come to the end of this live stream problem solved. Uh, now, just let's move on. Come on. In Surah Al Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then He says, And the ones who had never been pubescent before. Surah Al Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4. Wallahi lam yahidn. Now, the word lam in Arabic, it's what you call harfunahi lil madi, which means that it's something, a negative term for the past tense. The Mufassirun, they say about this term, about this verse, it talks about breastfeeding women, because when you're breastfeeding, you can't have, you obviously can't menstruate. And it also talks about pregnant women, obviously, you don't menstruate. Okay, However, at the same time, yeah, yeah. Does it say anything about that? Yes, it does. I'm just. Yeah, it does. Yeah, gotta, agree. Agree, gotta, agree, gotta agree with Hijab on this one. Let me, Absolutely. That's the, that's the headline. David Wood, an apostate prophet, finally agree with Muhammad, I, with Muhammad Hijab on something. I completely agree with Muhammad Hijab here. Yeah. He's definitely on. Do you want to pull it up? Uh, you want to read 65 4? Yeah, I, I've yeah. Got, I, I, could, I could read some commentaries as well if you wanted to show people the verse. The verse. I got the verse here. So verse uh, chapter 65, verse 4, which is what Muhammad Hijab references here in this video. It says, according to the Sahih International translation. Yeah, let me let me let me let me uh, uh, just because th this this verse does sound confusing unless you are aware of 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 the er previous revelations in the Quran. So the Quran had allowed. Um, I mean, the, the Quran had given rulings on divorce. Um, if you're going to divorce a woman, then you need to wait three monthly cycles before she remarries because, um, you know, you, you want to avoid confusion if she's pregnant. You don't you don't want to be a situation. You don't want to be in a situation where you divorce a woman. She goes and marries an another guy the next day and then she's pregnant and you're not sure uh, whose child it is. So um, you came up with this rule three monthly cycles. And so that had already been revealed. But then the questions arose because there are three sort of categories of wives who wouldn't have a monthly cycle. And that is uh, someone who's pregnant, someone who is too old, so someone who's gone through menopause, or someone who's too young. And then so Muhammad, how can we wait three monthly cycles for these categories of wives who don't have a monthly cycle? And Surah 65.4 is an answer to those, question, to those questions. Uh, what do you do about those three categories of wives? And it says regarding that uh, in Sahih International, and those who no longer expect menstruation among your women, if you doubt, then their period is three months. And also for those who have not menstruated and for those who are pregnant, their term is until they give birth and whoever fears Allah, he will make for him his matter ease. And yeah, read the, uh, yeah, Mosin Khan there. Mosin Khan uh, says uh, in, in that regard, uh is three months and for those who have no courses so no monthly menstrual cycle i.e they, they are, are still, still immature immature yeah i.e they are still immature yeah so, uh, Arbe, Arbe, for example says and those who have not menstruated as yet mm -hmm. and you can find the same interpretation in multiple uh translations and also in the exegesis the tefsirs yeah, so what this is saying, ladies and gentlemen, is um, yes, the, the earlier command, the previous command was then wait three months, three menstrual cycles, three monthly menstrual cycles. If you're going to divorce a woman, the question was, hey, what about uh, what about wives that don't have a monthly menstrual cycle, either because they're too young or because they're too old or because they're pregnant? And these are the answers. And notice we already have Muhammad Hijab confirming this interpretation, but just so any, just so no one thinks that Muhammad Hijab is some idiot who's making this stuff up on his own, I'll go to, uh, let me quickly read uh, some of the greatest commentary commentaries of all time. Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir, right? It says, Allah the Exalted clarifies. Oh, you got Ibn Kathir up? I do. Uh, I do. What weird site are you on? I don't know. Uh, 
if you have doubt and those who have no courses, as you're saying, um, you, you can go ahead, go ahead and read your, your uh, let's see right there. What does that say? Like, well, I'm having trouble cause it's so tiny on my screen here. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, the second is that if you do not know the ruling in the case, blah, 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 then the th ruling is three months. Oh, okay. Go, scroll down, scroll down. Those in menopause. Um, among your women, for them, the idda, if you have doubt, is three months. And for those who have no courses. And for those who are pregnant, their idda is until they lay down their burden. Ibn Abi Hatim, blah, blah, blah. Uh, where where are you? Uh, when the Ayan Suraj al-Bakr was revealed prescribing the idda of divorce, some people in Medina said there are still some women whose idda has not been mentioned in the Quran. There are the young, the old, whose menstruation is discontinued, and the pregnant. Later on, the ayah was revealed. I think there should be uh, there should be more. Uh, and for those, until they lay down, the, lay down their burden, I don't know. <laughs> just just read your part. Uh, I, yeah, uh, you you got this. Giant, okay, yeah, I've got the I got the relevant section right here. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You can find it. It starts. The relevant section uh, says Allah the Exalted clarifies the waiting period of the woman in menopause, and that is the one whose menstruation has stopped due to her older age. Her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based upon the ayat in Surat Al Baqarah. This, uh, the same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. Oh, I got it right here. Oh, there you go. There you have it. Uh, so he clarifies, uh, yeah, those in menopause and those who do not have menses. Uh, so notice uh, her idda is three months instead of the three monthly cycles for those who menstruate, which is based upon the eye, blah, blah, blah. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. So this is talking about girls who are too young to have a monthly menstrual cycle, their idda is three months. So the idda is that is that is that waiting period before mm -hmm. she can before she can marry again. Uh, let me read Tafsir Jalalain real quick. Tafsir Jalalain says, and as for those of your women uh, who no longer expect to menstruate, so that's the two, those who are too old. If you have any doubts about their waiting period, their prescribed waiting period shall be three months. And also for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age, their period also shall be three months. So Jalalain, the, the two Jalal specifically say that this, uh, this is um, for girls who are too young to menstruate. And then Ibn Abbas, um, he actually gives the historical background. Uh, it says, uh, and as for such of your women as despair of menstruation, and then his commentary says, because of old age, if you doubt about their waiting period, the period of waiting shall be three months, upon which, he actually gives the historical background, someone's asking Muhammad this question, upon which another man asked, O Messenger of Allah, what about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation because they are too young? And it's because uh, because of their young age, their waiting period is three months. Yeah. So these are, these are some of the most respected uh, commentaries of all time. They're saying exactly what Muhammad Hijab said, that this is just talking, all, all it says is, it's talking about marrying, divorcing, and then remarrying, someone else remarries a girl all before she has reached the age of puberty, all before she has, uh, she has a, mon a monthly menstrual cycle. And the tough series that David just read, I mean, uh, Ibn Kathir is the most widely recognized, the most popular uh, tough series, exegesis interpretation of uh, the Quran, known by everybody around the world and followed uh, very, very much precisely by the traditionalists. And uh, when it comes to um, uh, Tafsir Jalalain, which is um, the Tafsir of the two, two Jalans, and that is a, a Tafsir that is also very widely known, one of the most popular ones, and is also known because it is uh, it's very specifically addresses it, the explanations of, um, of, of words and breaks things down in a very uh, simple, easy to understand way. And what it does here when it breaks down things in a simple, easy to understand way, uh, way it is that it, it it exposes the Quran as something pretty barbaric. Yeah, and uh, uh, just for a modern, uh, a twentieth century uh, commentator, uh, Maududi is uh, certainly among the most uh, famous commentators of the twentieth century. And his commentary, he says on this verse, therefore making mention of the waiting period for the girls who have not yet menstruated clearly proves that it is not only permissible 
Halal, to give away the girl in marriage at this age, but it is but it is also permissible for the husband to consummate marriage with her. Now, obviously, watch what he says. Now, obviously, no Muslim has the right to forbid a thing which the Quran has held as permissible. So listen to what Hijab says. He says, if you just look at the Quran, you would say it's halal. Maududi says, no man has a right to look at what the Quran says uh, is halal and then and then say it's 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 not permissible and so th th man there's they got some problems here dude all their commentaries say what it, say what it means hijab agrees that it means that but hijab is saying hey we can't look we can't go with the halal on this one this is too sick this is too sick we have to go outside the quran yeah yeah absolutely wow no, 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 no. We'll let, we'll let, let me read it out for non-speaking out of there. Surah 65 verse yeah, yeah. 4. As for the women who have reached the... menopause, yes, yes. if you have any doubts, the interim shall be three months. Yeah. As for those whose menstruation has ceased, okay, good. For those who are this, already this pregnant, is it. Good. The interim is until they give birth. This is the verse. This Anyone is the verse. who reverence Allah, he makes his martyrdom. <laughs> Why doesn't he just let the guy speak? No, listen, you but, but you're with me here. Well, well, look, 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 look at that. Look at these terrified the girls, by the way. Sorry, Cameron. Do you mind if I just because because to other people they might not know what I'm trying yeah, to say. Yeah, look at these girls. So what, let me just finish what I'm saying and then you can come back. In the Sunnah, there's a hadith. And by the way, this is very important. Yeah, I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's right. Wait a minute, what did you say? Wait a minute, what did you say? That's right. <laughs> He's absolutely correct. He's going to break it down. He's going to say, hey, all... And this is really a big slap in the face to Ali Dawa and some of the other Muslims who... Ah, as, long, as long as you wait for puberty, if my daughter... Reaches the age of puberty, that I would tell her you are ready to be married, right? And hijab saying that's not even what the Quran says. The Quran yeah. doesn't even say you have to reach puberty. It's not because of puberty. Look at that terrified girl in the background, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Not because of puberty, because that verse in the Quran actually says lem yahidn. They never had puberty before. You can't go around that. You can't go around the that. The reason Allah. why we don't have sexual intercourse with those people is because of harm. The hadith says la darar wa la dirar. And I've said before, the reason why is because of the Sunnah, not because of the Quran. Such a la darar means you can't inflict harm to anyone else. You know, I'm going to make a point to you today and to the, to the British government. <laughs> Wait a minute, what did you say, British government? Yes, the British government. Wait a minute, what did you say? Uh, it's, it's very funny that he basically appeals to the, to, the, to the harm principle here and unites it with his uh, traditional Islamic beliefs. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't, you can't harm people, and so since you can't harm people, then uh, obviously you can't have sex with a five-year-old. See, now we overrule what Allah has declared halal. <laughs> now worship me, worship me. You've heard my interpretation. Everyone, worship me. Agree with me, and not with Allah. Uh, yeah. you, you can, you can either go through this entire uh, section. It, it, it's kind of a, uh, it's not directly relevant to the Quran discussion. So up to you, or, or maybe you can speed it up. I'll give you the gist of what he says. He's going to say uh, um, that. He's going to talk about the British system where it's just an it's just a minimum age of consent. And he's going to point out, well, what if what if a woman's 100 years old? She would be in danger having sex with a with a young guy, too. And the British law doesn't say you can't have sex with a 100 year old. So, ha ha, you see, Islam is actually better. OK, <laughs> let's, let's 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 go through that. Yeah, Government, I believe. That the way they formalize the age of consent is flawed. Let me tell you why. And I'll come back. No, no but, but Allah, I'll, let, let me come this to you. Let me come to you. Let me, I, I, I'll move you. Camera, give me a second. Give me a second, please. I beg you. I beg you. Yeah? You know, in, the, in Islam, it's haram to have sexual intercourse with anyone who you'll cause harm to. That's why we don't have a problem with the age of consent, let's say. Yeah? In, the, in this country, a 30 year old man can have sexual intercourse with a centenarian. A hundred-year-old woman. But let me, sorry, I'm going to be explicit here, Camel, uh, yeah? If a 30-year-old man has sexual intercourse with a hundred-year-old woman, it's going to cause physical harm and psychological harm. Wait a minute, what did you say? What do you mean? What did you say? 
the same two things, which is the reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with eight year olds and nine year olds and 10 year olds in this country. What, how in the world is that comparable? Yeah, all he's saying is uh, the Islamic way, if you actually go with the Hadith and you apply some sort of rule about harm, which he's interpreting, which he's interpreting as overruling Allah's claim in the Quran that you can have sex with a five-year-old. Um, he's interpreting it that way and he's saying this is actually, the Islamic way is actually better because uh, we wouldn't just say, oh, uh, the law says I can have sex with a hundred-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> in, in Islam, based on my interpretation of harm, that could be harmful, and therefore I wouldn't have sex with a hundred-year-old and wouldn't wouldn't harm her. <laughs> Wait a minute, what did so you Islam say? is better for women. <laughs> this is awesome, man. I I don't I don't understand this guy. Look at these girls in the background, man. They're, uh, <laughs> their I really minds, don't. Their don't minds their minds are mush right now after this. <laughs> Yeah, someone pointed out a uh, 100 year old woman can consent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he's saying. He's saying a 100 year old woman should not be able to consent because to to sex with a young a young virile guy because he's going to basically break her. Well, well, fantastic. And Great so this is where his this is where his job's mind goes when he's thinking about yes. stuff. It's the same like golden showers, golden showers. Don't have sex with 100 year old uh, grandmas because it's just it's it's also very harmful. Uh, for the same reason that we don't have sex with you know those people, meaning uh, five year olds and six year olds, uh, you should also not go and have sex with one hundred year old uh, grandmas. It's very it's it's harmful. Uh, yeah, and and Islam of course gives us the answer to that, provides us with the with the idea that we should not cause harm. And since we somehow understand that it is harmful to have sex with one hundred year old women. We should therefore ignore Allah's rulings in the Quran and add this additional rule and say that is not permissible. And thereby we also conclude that our own minds and our observations of reality are more are superior and more important to Allah's word in the Quran. Yep. Precisely. Yeah. Precisely. All right. All right. So if that's the case, they should make it illegal for a 30 year old to have sex with a 100 year old, just as they made it illegal for under 16s to be having sexual intercourse with over 16s. Now, the point is this, Islam, why does it stop certain marriages from taking place? It only stops it on the basis of harm. And that is a case by case reality. If somebody, for example, as I've just mentioned, is 30 years old and he's having sexual intercourse with a woman that's 100 years old who's got a hip replacement surgery, that's actually haram. That marriage should not be allowed to take place in Islam. <laughs> you see? <laughs> Suppose you're marrying, suppose you want to marry a hundred year old who just got her hips replaced. <laughs> this is why you need my this understanding is, of this of this hadith about harm. This is getting really weird. I, I didn't I didn't think it would go down. It's, it's just it's just amazing. Muslims look at this. Alhamdulillah, so brilliant, <laughs> such a brilliant explanation. Until we come along and say, guys, look at what he just said, and then ah, oh, you dirty Islamophobes, how dare you report what Brother Hijab just said? This is getting really weird, man. Top G! Top G is going full top G mode right now, man. Top G, yeah. Top G! Islam. I would actually urge the British government to take this Islamic principle on board. Because actually exploitation, both physical and psychological, can take place. And the UK government watched this video and they thought, uh-huh. We do need that. Ooh. Well, let's just make call, him. Find this guy immediately. Find Mohammed Hijab. <laughs> make, him, make him the next prime minister so that he can... <laughs> Oh if a 30 year old man fully vitalized has sexual intercourse with a 100 year old woman fully vitalized. now the point is this the quran doesn't say doesn't say anywhere in the quran that the woman has to be pubescent that's true why because you can have a 16 year old it's possible you can have a 16 year old pre-pubescent it's possible right. like you I can in islam 15 is the max but in this country 16 you could it's, it's conceivable to find a, a 16 year old woman who's, for example, hasn't, hasn't uh, menstruated yet. It is conceivable, although it's very unlikely, right? The point is this. In the Islamic discourse, the reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with categories of people, whether it be a 100-year-old woman if you're 30, or a 5-year-old girl if you're 30, yeah, is because of the harm, both psychological and physical, that you'll be causing them. 
Now I dare you now, you're a Quran alone guy. Triple dog I dare here. you to find one verse in I the Quran you. where what? it says you're not allowed to marry someone based on harm, or you're not allowed to have sexual intercourse based on harm, or you're not allowed to marry someone based on puberty. Now, did, so, did you, uh, yeah, go ahead. So, so, so he, he, he just uh, breaks down and challenges the guy, the Quran only guy in the end, explicitly asking him, if he can find one single verse in the Quran that says you may not have uh, you know, a marriage or sexual intercourse with somebody who has not reached uh, puberty, somebody who is uh, uh, who, who is below a certain age, uh, that you cannot marry or have sexual intercourse based on harm, uh, because these things are clearly and obviously not found in the Quran. If you go by the Quran itself, if you read the Quran, you will not find such things. On the contrary, you will understand if you only read the Quran that it is entirely permissible and unproblematic to go and have sex uh, with all kinds of little girls, no matter whether, no matter if they have reached puberty or not, and no matter if you harm them or not. That's what you get from reading the Quran. That's what he says. Yeah, and uh, I mean, guys, it. I mean, think about the implications here. Again, one, once he is granted that Allah's speech makes it halal to have sex with a five-year-old and only his reasoning about harm makes it haram, every if you if you if you go with him and not with what he says about Allah, then you're you're committing shirk and you're worshiping Muhammad Hijab. Not according to me, not according to AP, according to Muhammad himself. It's Muhammad who said that when you allow a human being to tell you that something is haram, when Allah has made it halal, you're actually worshiping the person. But I mean, think about what he's saying. He's saying, if someone is going off to a, to a land where there are no Muslims and, 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 and someone uh, converts to Islam, someone converts to Islam and is going there, he's saying that if you just handed that person the Quran and did not also hand him massive collections of hadiths to learn Islam, this person would would go to this other land, open up the Quran, read the Quran over. He could read it a thousand times and he would walk away. According to Muhammad Hijab, he would walk away saying, I can go have sex with a five year old. Nothing in this book says otherwise. And then Muhammad Hijab would say, no, you have to look up my videos to find out why why you shouldn't do that. You have to worship me, worship me. Interesting. Here's somebody who says, uh, by the name of uh, Mick Ferguson, uh, which sounds very credible, says, blatant lie, Quran says, girl needs to reach puberty. Chapter and verse, Mick. Where? Chapter and verse, Mick. We just, we just, we literally went to the Quran and four commentaries, th three of the, the most respected commentaries in history, and then one, uh, well, possibly the most famous 20th century Commentate, commentary and Muhammad Hijab breaking down the Arabic right here. They all agree the Quran is saying, yes, you can marry, have sex with, div and divorce a girl all before she's reached puberty. And that that girl can then go marry another guy who can marry her, have sex with her, divorce her, pass her on to the next guy. As long as you wait three months in between those, a, a prepubescent girl can have seven or eight different husbands. Before she's ever even reached puberty, because according to Muhammad Hijab, she could start when she's five, according to the Quran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, but but we're the Islamophobes, you bigots. How dare you say this? My goodness, man. The only uh, the only part in the Quran where it actually specifies an age, uh, it doesn't specify where it mentions an age in relation to uh, marriage is um, where it says uh, that. Uh, if you have if you take orphans and you take care of orphans, then um, you should. You should, you know, uh, check them and uh, marry them off when they reach a, a an, an age of marriage. That's what it says. Test the orphans, uh, test them well, and um, and when they when they reach the age of marrying, then you can you should marry them off. Uh, but that again is a very specific reference to to orphans, and it doesn't say this is about puberty. It says when they are ready to get married, then marry them off. Mm -hmm. And that has its own interpretations. This is not a ruling regarding uh, you know, when it is allowed to marry a little girl. Mm -hmm. That here, we have just gone through it, according to Muhammad Hijab and to many others. And the Quran itself is simply not found in the Quran. The Quran itself... Is it, is it isn't that isn't this amazing, by the way? I mean, yeah. Allah, his perfectly clear speech. And again, the, the standard method of understanding all the verses about Allah's clarity is that he's perfectly clear in his commands. He gives a ruling. 
that is about divorcing girls after you've had sex with them, and yet the girls haven't reached puberty. Hijab agrees with us. Uh, all of Islam's greatest commentators agree with us, and yet we're the we're the liars. Isn't this amazing? It's like it, they can all say it for 14 centuries. They can all say the same thing. As soon as we say, hey, guys, look at what they just said, then it becomes an embarrassment, and it's liars! How dare you lie about our book? Well, my goodness, man. What a religion, yeah. dude. What a religion. What a, what a religion. <laughs> Obviously, these people are all Islamophobes. Uh, Muhammad Hijab, David Wood, an apostate prophet, Ibn Kathir, the, the Jalalain, uh, and so on. All right. Look yeah. at that girl. Look at that girl in the background, man. <laughs> Terrified. What? Terrified. My imam what? didn't tell me this. She's thinking, wait a minute, what did you say? If you do that, uh, I will take my, my oh, point it back. It, makes it, it doesn't. It so it that makes it halal no, it then. No, it makes no, it halal. No, it so if you're a Quran alone, no, you're allowed to have no, sexual intercourse no, with five year olds. Because it tells you who you should marry. It tells you who where, you should Where marry. does it say that? Where it's, yeah, you're not allowed to marry no, your no, auntie, no, your no, mother, no, and that's no, enough. No, I'm not saying that. The criteria okay. of what you should look for in a marriage. Go on, what does it say? Firstly, that? from Muslim, Allah says that a pure man for a pure woman. Okay, Me, fine, fine. We're talking about belief. Okay. Your belief has how, how pure your belief, for example. Get me one verse in the Quran which says the woman has to be prepubescent. No. One verse. Wait, 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 wait. Do you, do you, do you see what this? Do you see what this guy's doing? Saying you have to marry a believer, and so he's. It, it looks like he's saying, ah, you have to. You know, you're supposed to marry a believer, even though you are allowed to marry, you know, Jews and Christians and so on. Uh, so somehow they're in the believer category. Um, but uh, he's saying you have to marry a believer. And so it looks like he's saying, well, a, a five-year-old wouldn't, couldn't really be a believer. Doesn't know, a five-year-old doesn't know anything. So a five-year-old couldn't even be a believer. But notice that's Hijab's point. You have to do some gymnastics like this and say, oh, okay, yeah, this verse is clearly saying you can have sex with a five-year-old. It's halal. According to this verse, you have to take something else in the Quran and twist it into, into saying uh -huh, you can't. Uh -huh. Which is what this guy's he has to do because he has no outside source. He's Quran only. By the way, there there is a funny um side note here. Uh some people who um also like to appeal to Ibn Kathir uh, and others uh want to point out that uh the Quran does indeed say that there is um or the Quran um you know hints that girls should only be married off at the age of a puberty, and then they refer to Ibn Kathir. Uh, the, the issue is Ibn Kathir never actually really says such a thing. There is um, an interpretation by Ibn Kathir about the verse that I just mentioned, which is, by the way, chapter mm -hmm. 4, verse 6, I think, um, where he comments on marrying off orphans when they have reached the age of marriage. And he says in the actual text uh, of the tafsir that um, that uh, when they have reached the age of maturity mm -hmm. and maturity is then not specified uh, it, it is not said that it is puberty what he says about it is something like that there have been uh, differing opinions on when this maturity is and one of the popular opinions is that once a child begins to have wet dreams then the child is matured can be uh, can be married off <laughs> yeah. So, and, and and again, that that's the that's the problem is the verse that's actually talking about whether you can have sex with a five year old says yes, thumbs up, and you have to go to interpretations yeah. of other things and interpret it in certain ways, and then apply it beyond orphans, and that you have to do all these uh you have to do you have to take all these additional steps when according to Surah sixty five verse four it's halal it's halal. <laughs> You don't get to you don't get to change halal to haram through interpretations once Allah has classified something as halal. Yep. Yep. That's exactly what it is. Area for what marriage should be based on. Not what it should I want be one verse on. in the Quran what from the beginning of the book on. to the end of the book which says that she has to be blessed. I've just, I've just said that. So okay, so that makes it halal from no, your perspective. No, it doesn't. From no, your perspective, it's halal. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It does. Because the criteria for marriage is defined in the Quran. Where? What should be a marriage? Oh, in a and where does it say puberty? Where does it family? say puberty is because not? Firstly, for mostly, she should have the same belief as you. How can a five year old girl that doesn't know the difference? Bro, I'm not. I'm, yeah, I don't agree. Five year old doesn't. If a five year old doesn't. Isn't. Can't be classified as a believer, even. <laughs> This guy obviously doesn't know his history. Um, in his history, it is a, a child of a of a Muslim family is considered child of a believer. Is considered a believer. You don't have to do a. You don't have to go through. An, he's Quran, I believe only, in he's Quran only, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, this is so funny. He's Quran only, and then he has to somehow um, appeal to some logic that is outside of the Quran in order to then yeah. explain the 
you know, exp explain the Quran. It, yeah. it, it always goes there. It mm -hmm. always has to go there. They always have to, the, the Quranists have to somehow interpret the Quran based on some, uh, you know, interpretations and reasonings and figure out what the Quran actually says and what the Quran actually, uh, what Quran verses actually mean. But then they claim to be uh, simply Quran only believers. It is mm -hmm. weird. Who's that? We both say no. What belief is? Okay, fine. So why would I marry a no, no, no. So the criteria is the no, this, this, no. this doesn't make sense. So what you're saying? I want you to find me no, one no, thing no, in the no, Quran. No, the criteria Allah tells you what is for marriage, not what is Listen, not for marriage. Uh, Camera, what is Camera. for marriage? You know, in the Quran no. it says Hurmat no. Alikum It says you're not allowed to marry your mum. It says you're not allowed to marry your sister, your auntie. Where does it say you're not allowed to marry a creepy person? If you're a Shia, you marry a Shia. If you're a Sunni, then you look for a woman who believes in a Sunni. Listen, I'm not getting an answer here, my friend. I am. It's from the Quran. No, but you're yeah, not giving me a direct time. verse in the yeah. Quran. Notice what Hijab is saying. Give me a verse which says anything remotely resembling don't have sex with a girl until she's reached puberty. And this guy is, whose Quran only supposedly is adding his own interpretations to a bunch of things. Ah, but a, you know, a five-year-old can't really be considered a believer. She doesn't know anything. <laughs> I mean, yeah, notice I'm, how horrifying yeah. this is. Because if you put it together, hey, a five-year-old doesn't know anything. Right, a five-year-old doesn't knows very little. Um, my, I have a I, one of my sons is almost five. He does not know uh, much about life or marriage or anything like that. Um, but if you put that together with, hey, the Quran allows it allows sex with five-year-olds. It's yes, sorry, bud. The Quran allows you to have sex with a, a five-year-old, uh, and that that should be terrifying and horrifying to you. Somehow, all these guys are Muslims, and it's all fine. Yeah. Yeah, I have a six-year-old, and he was—he uh, just turned six, and he was trying to convince me uh, a few weeks ago that leprechauns are real, and that I'm just uh, being being weird when I say they're not real; they're fake. You see? Yeah, but yeah. So you see, you deny Islam, and now your kids believe in leprechauns. You see? <laughs> I want a direct verse. I want a direct verse. Go on. There is no way in the Quran where Allah says a pure man for a pure woman. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Well, that's that's that a straw man to... argument. No, it's not. I want a direct answer to my question no, here. I, I, I've just said yeah. the criteria for why we're not allowed to marry uh, uh, prepubescent, so let's say women that, that can't deal with it, for you mates. is harm. No, that comes girls. from the Sunnah. Now, the, the only verse in the Quran is Wala tulku bi aidikum ila tahluka. Don't cause your own harm, harm to your own self. But it doesn't say anything about causing harm to others. I'm looking for one verse that's in the Quran. Just one. I'm looking for one verse just one. that you, you can say, you pinpoint it and say, this is where it says prepubescent marriage or whatever is not allowed. It's only found in the Sunnah. Yeah, it's a simple It's a simple request, right? Give me the verse, chapter yeah, and verse. Yeah, yeah. Very simple, but no, no takers. This is kind of like the Zachar Naik method where he uh, says, give me one verse which uh, clearly and unequivocally says, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. This and this and that. Yeah, uh, except, I mean, in this situation, it's, we've got the, the clearest verse that speaks on this is is acknowledged by the greatest Muslim commentators of all time to say it's a lull to have sex with a five-year-old. So no. you, you, you show me otherwise, and you can't. Yeah. I root for the tall, uh, bearded guy here. It's, it's only found in the Sunnah. Because... That is an addition. That's the and problem now with the Quran alone. No, it's not. Because I give the answer for what is That's the, the problem with the Quran marriage. alone. The criteria for the marriage, what you look for your partner, is clearly defined in the Quran. That's and not good enough for me. And a five-year-old cannot make a distinction and understand No, but that's your extrapolation. I'm saying, no. get me a verse in the Quran. Yeah. Direct verse. No, you can't get a direct verse. Okay, there you have it. So you are... <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta, you can't, you, can't, you, can't, you can't get a direct verse. Okay, there you have it. So there the only... It. The only... The only direct verse says, yes, you can have sex with a five-year-old. Muhammad Hijab says, show me anything that says otherwise. A guy tries to turn a claim about uh, having a believing or pure wife into something that would rule out five-year-olds, but he doesn't do a good job. And so that's it. Well, but Muhammad Hijab demonstrated it very, very clearly that according to the Quran, it is okay to have sex with a five-year-old girl. It's case closed. Indisputable. 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 100% correct, Muhammad Hijab. Absolutely. So you can, you can, you can marry a, a five-year-old? That lays yep. out a criteria of what you should look in a partner. Okay, do you agree with me that being... That woman, okay, Camero, you know, that's a, done a now. We'll marriage. move on. Okay, the guy is humiliated, is destroyed. Uh, do you want to move to the section where he talks about um, 
wives and how to they're, treat them. They're probably about to get to it, aren't they? Oh. That's done, we move on. No, no problem. You're not done. Okay, give me something. <laughs> no, that's not done. Give me you something. You've got to first admit what I'm saying, acknowledge what it is that I'm I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, I do acknowledge. Yes, I do acknowledge. Yeah, of course. Yes, so I do. Of course. Look at the grin on his face. Look at the grin on his face. Yes, I. I, I like this guy. I, I, I like acknowledge you, that words have okay. come out of your mouth. No, <laughs> now that we've established this point. What the criteria of marriage is? It doesn't tell us what it's Okay, not. thank you. Okay, good. So, Let's see if the people are convinced with that we move on. Now, if they're not convinced, no problem. They can only get convinced no problem. if they study the If, if they're not convinced, we'll move on. Now, second question. The Quran says, we go. Now, I'm going to get become all contrary. So this is the uh, important topic that we actually want to address today and talk about. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the talk is coming to chapter 4, verse 34, which is the very infamous, notorious verse, which says that you have to discipline your wives, and if they do not listen to you, you may uh, beat them, you may hit them. And there, the specific word, uh, he says, which is um, beating, striking, which they will now discuss. And this is very, very critical. And and so so notice, uh, yeah, what 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 he did in the section about. Um, so, matter of fact, let, let me give the the overall picture. Here, here's the issue: people who are Quran only, you can have a sophisticated reason, a serious reason for being Quran only, right? It's wait, that's the speech of Allah. I don't have to believe in Muhammad. Muhammad is basically a mailman. He's receiving the message and delivering the message. I, there, why would I believe everything this guy says? Although there, you have to deal with some Quran passages that tell you what to think about Muhammad and lay him down as the pattern of conduct and so on. But anyway, the point is, uh, the, the the way Quran only Muslims who've actually thought through the issue have described it. It's like, hey, if you get a letter from a king and the, they bring you the letter, you don't start, oh, anything the mailman tells me to do, I'll do what the mailman tells me. like, why would you do that, right? Um, but the, the fact is, the vast majority of people who go in a Quran only direction are doing it to avoid all the embarrassing facts in the hadith, right? They're trying to avoid all the stuff about things like Muhammad uh, having sex with a nine-year-old girl and, uh, you know, Aisha having to clean his semen stains. They want to avoid all that stuff and just say, hey, let's just go with the Quran. And so, hey, we can avoid all these horrible problematic things by just going with the Quran. And hijab is flipping that and saying, no, if you just go with the Quran, you don't have the limitations that are placed on some of these things by the Hadith. And so it's actually, you get something worse. You don't get something better by ignoring the Hadith. You get something that's even sicker and more demonic and evil than if you go with the Hadith. And so he's pointing out how extreme it is to just go with the Quran because you would think you can have sex with a five-year-old and now he's going to go, hey, if you're trying to avoid stuff in the Hadith about wife beating, you need to think again because... It's actually worse. It's actually worse if you read the Quran without the limitations on wife beating that you find in the Hadith. Yep, yep, yep. Controversial on this guy, yeah? The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never hit his wife, ever, ever. Uh, that's deba yeah? that's debatable. Oh, debatable, 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 debatable. Debatable. There's a there's there's a hadith that says Muhammad never never hit his wives, but there are other hadiths that say he did hit his his wives, and now they now they're they're retranslating them. So you can go with the with the the, the hard copies, the old hard copies of uh, Sahih Muslim and um, Sunan An Nasai, and they say that they translate it as um, Muhammad struck. Uh, Aisha says he struck me in my chest, which caused me pain. That's what uh, uh, Sahih Muslim and Sunan An Nasai say. Now, if you go to them, like on Sunnah Sunnah.com, it says he gave me a shove. Right. So so they're 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 now they're retranslating the part about the parts about Muhammad hitting Aisha in order because we started using it as a criticism. So in other words, exactly what's going on here. Uh, they're fine saying it for 14 centuries. As soon as we use it as a criticism of Islam, they want to they want to uh, suddenly change um, because we're Islamophobes. Yeah. Yeah. And um it is also very clear in the hadith that Muhammad permitted women to uh, the, the beating of women. That he also said that uh, men should not be questioned why they beat their women, and yep. and 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 there is much more. There is also. Do you want to go into those sources right now, or do you want to um, move on for a little bit and then go back to that? Uh, yeah, we can. What, what do you mean sources? You mean the the ones about uh, about Muhammad hitting Aisha or? Well, there's also the, uh, about, the one about, about 434 or, oh yeah, there's, yeah, there, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let, let him talk a little more. And then, yeah, okay. we definitely want to look at what is acceptable according to the Hadith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he never created Hadiths. Okay. Is it okay. elevation? Okay. Camel, camel, camel. The only Hadith that he brought camel. was the Asan al-Hadith. 
Surah 39, verse 23. Five, five, five. Allah has said now in the best hadith. Okay, mashallah. A book that is consistent, <laughs> okay. related, Very nice. contrasting, repeating. Yes, yes. The skins of those who reverence the Lord. Okay, fine. This is the okay, hadith fine, that he fine. brought. He didn't bring anything else, I think. Okay, mashallah. Very nice. Thank you for that. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I have to ask him this. He needs yep. to know. Uh -huh. no, no. Okay, no, no. Okay, I need to know. But I need to ask. Okay, he needs to know. I like it. Now you're starting to be, now you're starting to get some of the. the listen. But getting before the getting the hikmah. Before I give you the shovel. Wait, well, hold on, hold on. No That's it. What are you talking about, brother? Shovel? No, look. Wait a minute. What did you say? <laughs> before I get the shovel to oh, bury God. you, to bury you. Wait a minute. Where were we? If the people are convinced with that, we move on. Okay. It's consistent, okay. relating, nice. contrasting, repeating. Yes, yes. The skins of those who reverence Takush the Lord. <laughs> and he never created hadiths. Okay. Is okay. Where? Uh, why? You keep this... messing around with it. He's about to go in. Just let it play. Okay. No, it just went to the beginning, and then I don't. I don't know if we are at the right place now. Okay. Camro. 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 Okay. Yeah. The, the only hadith that he brought Kamru. was the Asan al hadith Surah 39, verse 23. Five, five, five. Allah has said now in the best hadith. Okay, mashallah. A book that is consistent, okay. relating, nice. contrasting, repeating. Yes, yes. The skins of those who reverence Taqush the Lord. Okay, fine. This is the okay, hadith fine, that fine. he brought. He didn't bring anything else, I think. Okay, mashallah. Very nice. Thank you for that. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. I have to ask him this. You got to ask him. He needs to know. He needs no, to, know. to know. Okay, no, no. Okay, I need to know. But I need to ask... Okay, he needs to know. I like it. Now you're starting to be, now you're starting to get some of the, the, the speaker's listen. corner power. Hikmah. But before, the hawk, before I give you the, the shovel, hawk, the hawk and the hick. Before I bury well, you. Well, hold on, hold on. The shovel. No shovel. That's it. What are you talking about, brother? Shovel? Wait a minute. No, look. The, 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 the grave is dug. The grave, the grave is dug. dug. You're inside of it. Now look, you've you're got the grave. you've got two options. You can have the humble hand. The humble hand. That will take you out of the grave, or you can have the shovel of evidence. That will bury you. Now I'm going to be very straightforward with you here. The shovel of evidence is as follows. There we go. Forget about everything else. It could mean striking a parable, but it also means to hit. Yeah. In chapter number forty, uh, in chapter forty-seven of the Quran, Surah Muhammad, verse four, where it says, if you find in, in the battle of war and war, if you see the people of that you, you strive against them, Strike yeah, them in next. war, you can Strike fight them next. and hit their necks. Darb, the same word you use, darb. Darb, the word darab ayadribu can range from patting and yeah, touching. Okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, please, please, COVID, please. I have to interject. No, no, please, this allow me, come on, come on. in the Arabic language that has the most different meanings. Okay, fine. That's how you yeah, apply yeah, yeah. Camera, I'm not disagreeing with you, my friend. Yeah, I do agree. That point, yeah. I want to shake your hand and agree. Yeah. You'll, you'll, yeah. you'll yes. come on my way. Yes, I agree with that. I agree with this point. He's right. I was about to make the same point, me and you are on the same page now. The word daraba could actually mean striking a parable. It could mean tapping like this, like the tayammum. And it could mean hitting. It could mean beating someone up. Yeah, so uh, the context is that in the in chapter 4, verse 34, uh, which is the verse that talks about beating your wife, which I could uh, pull up right here, um, says... Men are in charge of women by right of what Allah has given one over the other and what they spend from their wealth. So righteous women are devoutly obedient, guarding in the husband's absence what Allah would have them guard. But those from whom you fear arrogance, first advise them. Then, if they persist, forsake them in bed. And finally, strike them. But if they obey you once more, seek no means against them. Indeed, Allah is over, ever exalted and grand, and grand. So if they obey you, they're supposed to be obedient. And you can uh, finally, as a final resort, after uh, two different options, strike them, hit them in order yeah. to turn them toward obedience and make them obedient to yourself, to the husband once again. And this word here, uh, strike, which uh, is... Is, is what they are basically talking about, which is also translated as beat them. And uh, if you want to... Scourge. Scourge was the uh, pickthal. Oh, yeah. Okay. And Scour scourge them. Scourge them. Um, and if you want to go into the, 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 the word here, into the root, which is here, uh, 
and strike them. So uh, daraba, which is this word, this root word, D-R-B, is the word that they are talking about. And in the Quran, you can find different instances of this word where it is mentioned. You can see uh, mostly it is used for strike, to hit, but also in different uh, contexts in different meanings but in this context it is translated as striking as hitting as and, translated by the islamic scholars yeah and notice um <clears throat> you need that for the logic like you read the sahih international and they add you know first and second and so on mm -hmm. to indicate mm -hmm. that there's an escalation going on that mm -hmm. first you warn them second then you banish them to a to a separate bed and finally the last straw you you beat them although it doesn't say you have to do, think of those as steps. It just can give. It could be giving you op, three options of how you deal with it. Um, but uh, I, I would say when you go with the escalation view, um, it actually rules out some reinterpretations because if you're escalating, hey, I've warned you. I've already warned you. And then okay, that wasn't enough. Now I'm I'm separating myself from you. You stay in your room. You stay in your room. Don't come near me. Um, and then I'm escalating beyond that. Well, that would be hitting. And so if you say, ah, well, you know, it just refers to something else or giving her another warning it doesn't make sense yep yeah, yep yeah, yep yeah. that was just the context explained here yeah you want to you want to check out uh 47 4 and what he, what he's saying um 47 4 yeah there you go <clears throat> and you just kind of need the beginning so when you meet those who disbelieve in battle strike their necks until when you have inflicted slaughter upon them notice what notice so this is what hijab is saying Surah 47 verse 4 says uh, you strike your enemies in battle, and this is referring to slaughtering them. And Hijab points out it's using this, it's using the same term for talking about striking your wife. And so if you don't, this is Hijab's point. <laughs> if you don't go to the hadith to place some limitations on what you can do to your wife, you would conclude that you can chop her head off that you can slaughter her when she disobeys you. Here's his point. This is the same word, darba, the same word as is used in uh, chapter 4, verse 34, when it describes hitting your wife. It says here, and strike them, strike your wives into obedience. And here it talks about the disbelievers. When you encounter them, strike their necks, slaughter them. Yeah. So just just to be clear, ladies and gentlemen, he's not saying that you can, that it's OK to uh, to slaughter your wife. He's saying if you just go with the Quran, there's nothing ruling that out. <laughs> he's saying that you would read Surah 4, verse 34. Hey, I can strike my wife. What does that mean? He's saying without the Hadith to place some limitations on what you could do, you would conclude I can strike her like I strike a guy in battle and slaughter him. So I yeah. can slaughter my wife if she gets out of line. So he's. this is what he says is going to bury this dude. It's going to bury the Quran-only position because there's no way out of this. Accord, not according to us, according to Muhammad Hijab. If you just read the Quran, you will conclude that you can chop your wife's head off if she gets out of line. Yeah, yeah. And, and hit on their fingers and chop their necks. That's what you could possibly do if you just go with the Quran. Mm -hmm. David, what do you say about that? Um yeah, we should. Uh, we should. Um, I mean, you could play a little more of the clip, but we also want to look at. We also want to look at the hadith as far as what you can do according to what you can do to your wife according to the hadith. Yeah, let's let's go over with the, with the video quickly and then. Yeah. Okay. Now the question is this: The Quran four thirty four. It says, If we want to take your approach to the Quran, which is that you don't have the Sunnah next to it, we know. The Prophet never touched his wife in that way. We know we don't we don't Wrong. advocate hitting women and stuff like that, yeah? Wrong. However, Wrong. Wrong. <laughs> if I was a Quran alone, Wallahi, I'll be honest with you. I would look at the Quran. Okay, I mean, he's, saying, he's saying he's being honest here. Okay, that's a fact. So my word, that's the Quran. You okay, study it that's fine. Right okay, well, thank you for that. Uh, even though it's a little bit of controversy there. We might not, we might not agree, but here, here's what I was, you, you, te you, you, you're going to teach me now, but once I ask you, yes, inshallah, what I was going to say to you is this, I don't know why I keep coming to you, brother, <laughs> what I'm going to say is this, yeah, if you read the Quran just like that, without reference to the Sunnah, to the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu 
that, that word becomes open to interpretation. A man now, a husband, can decide, okay, well, so like a nice man like you will say, no, this means strike a parable, yeah? Strike a parable. But this guy, okay, maybe not you, right? <laughs> or, or someone like me, or some bad guy, right? Who's got more aggressive tendencies. Let's look at that word. Daraba. Same word that's used for striving. I'm going to do that on my wife. Now the thing is, what restricts that man? Nothing restricts that man in the Quran alone. Why? Because that man now has absolute ability and right to interpret and extrapolate from that verse wherever he wants. You heard that, right? You heard that. So he says, according to, if you just read the Quran, somebody who reads the Quran could sit down and understand from the Quran, from the language that it uses and the, and the wording that it uses for these uh, specific instances and instructions, a man could understand, aha, uh -huh, I could strike my enemies in a violent way, and I could also uh, do the same way of striking, for example. To my wife right right yep. david yeah absolutely. what pre what prevents him from doing that nothing not the quran yeah no, not the quran so he, his point i mean so <laughs> notice he's saying hey i'll i'll uh, imagine a world imagine a world where all you have is the quran you, all you've got is the quran you read the quran from beginning to end then your wife disobeys you wait a minute what's the quran say to do when my wife's uh being arrogant or disobedient or rebellious what do i do according to the quran according to the quran you strike her you strike her to to make her you know stop this horrible horrible behavior and and so on uh, and he's pointing out, hey, the, the word for strike there is the same thing that's used of enemies in battle that's talking about beheading them and slaughtering them. And so you would conclude, if you're a more aggressive type, he's, and he basically said, notice what he says, because this is very important. He says, hey, if you're a nice guy, you're going to interpret that in some nice fashion. Oh, it means strike a parable or maybe strike a pose, something like that, strike, <laughs> right? But not not like physically attacker. And hijab saying, "Hey, I'm a more aggressive guy. I'm going to interpret it as slaughter." <laughs> and so this is what you get if you just go with the Quran. You will conclude that it is halal to chop your wife's head off for disobeying you. And he's saying, therefore, we need to go outside of the Quran and find out that you know you shouldn't you shouldn't be that harsh with your wife. Uh, so again, you have to go out to the Quran. You have to go outside of the Quran to find out that it's actually haram to chop your wife's head off for uh, messing up your falafel or something. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe we should just go ahead and finish. Uh, there can't be too much more to the video. Maybe we should just finish no, the video I, and then I, pull up and then pull up that hadith, which says which says what you can do in the hadith, which is yeah. Let's let's, bad, let's let's finish it very quickly and then. Surah 30, verse 21, Allah says, among His signs is that He go created on. for you spouses. Yeah, in order to have tranquility and content with okay, each other. Yeah, okay. You can't get that with a five-year-old. So he Yeah, I, I agree with that, by the way. <laughs> in your heart, love and care towards your spouses. In this, there are signs for My good, hij hijab's, that got to do? Hijab's yeah, yeah, making yeah. fun of his job is making fun of this guy for for attempting to to show from the Quran that, that yeah. what he's saying is wrong. And it's just it's yeah. amusing to hijab. He knows you can't defend that with the Quran. Yeah, he knows the Quran just yeah. cannot be cannot be used in that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's because fine. But what's that got to do with what I'm saying? One word has many different meanings. Yeah. Why did the narrators yeah. who are swimming a deep decide to take the no, no. My... translation yeah, has to beat your wife? I, no, no, they Allah didn't. That's what I'm wife. saying. That If we look at the Prophet's no, life, no, okay, do you, agree with, do, you, the Quran, do you agree with me that the Prophet never hit his wife? Yes, of course. How I do you know that? Because when I read, when I study the very the text, Quran doesn't... <laughs> this is a very important question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, notice. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, so so notice, it, 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 according to Hijab, and again, there there's disagreement in the Hadith. We'll just say that, ladies and gentlemen, as to whether Muhammad hit his wife. Uh, you find passages where he did, and you find you find a Hadith where where that says he didn't. Um, and so notice, you, you're going to interpret that based on how how nice you are. Um, but what Hijab is saying is, how would you know that Muhammad never hit his wife? The Quran says he can't. The Quran says he can hit his wife. In fact, if you're Quran only. Muhammad could chop his wife's heads off. How do you know he didn't? Obviously, you got to go to the, you got to go outside the Quran. So th this is a problem. How do you? How would you know what Muhammad did or did not do without other sources? 
Yeah. Tell you what he did with his wife. Brother, brother, what do him? Mean it to him? Leave them. Okay. Anyway, yeah, good, very good. But where? where how do you know that? How do you know that? How do you know the Prophet never hit his wife? Because when I study the very book, you know it's from the Sunnah. No, no, <laughs> Habibi. no, no, no. <laughs> I like this. Okay. When I study the very text that he delivered, what else can we do? Like so if your Quran. The, the guy is saying, I know that the Prophet Muhammad never hit his wife because when I study the text that he delivered, which is the Quran, I would understand that he would never do it. But. <laughs> But that, notice how he'd have works. to do it. He would have to say, okay, it says right here. He'd have to do what, what he's doing with 65.4, right? He'd have to do the same thing. Yes, it says in, in 434, I can strike them, but I'm going to go with some other verse and interpret it in some way that would rule out the violent interpretation uh, based on my feelings. That's, yeah, that's really yeah. what, and Hijab's pointing out how, how silly yeah. that is. Yeah, right. yeah. Alone, you're still towards pedophilia. And a severe type of pedophilia. A severe type of pedophilia. Whoa. Yeah, well, back, let, let, back let's get that, that up. Yeah. Let's get that phrase here. From Towards this. pedophilia. And a no, back it up. He no. said, no. if you're Quran. No. 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 I like this. Okay. When I study the very text that he delivered. What else? Can pedophilia. So if you're Quran alone, we you're still towards pedophilia. And a severe type of pedophilia, severe type of pedophilia. a wife abuse, a severe wife type abuse. of wife abuse. Severe and in fact, let me tell you something else. So. If you go by the Quran alone, you steer toward a severe form of pedophilia and a severe form of wife abuse. And this this isn't us saying this, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. This is Muhammad Hijab saying, if you just go with Allah's perfect speech, keep in mind, Allah had all eternity to get his, wor his, his words, his book, his speech exactly the way he wanted it. If you just go with Allah's perfect speech, you would you would uh, steer towards a severe type of pedophilia. You'd be a severe, a really an especially sick pedophile, and a severe type of wife abuse. So that so much so that your wives are are, are terrified. You're going to chop their heads off. And hijab is saying, if you just go with the Quran, that's what you would conclude. That's why you need to go outside the Quran and to other Muslim sources and other Muslim scholars and so on to find out that what is halal in the Quran is actually haram and therefore worship all these other guys. This is, I mean, this is nuts, man. This is so nuts. If, if you go by, by Muhammad Hijab's logic, if we bring the Quran to an, an untouched, uncontacted tribe, right, and give them the Quran, somehow make it available in their, in their language. They're dead. We just, we, just leave it, we just leave the Quran there with, with them and say, follow this book follow this book do whatever it says and they then somehow end up doing all kinds of horrible things and uh ma marrying and having sexual intercourse with three-year-olds or uh you know chopping off the heads of their wives if they don't obey them and so on then we can't really blame them because we told them to read the quran and to follow the quran and if you only follow the quran then you steer toward a severe form of pedophilia and, and toward a severe form of wife abuse, which would include brutally, you know, beating, hurting, uh, wounding, and killing her. Mm -hmm. That's the logic here. That's, That's the, the logic. He's 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 <laughs> correct. I mean, what are we going to say? What are we going to are we going to disagree with the mighty Muhammad Hijab? Of course not. Uh, is, is that almost over? It seems, it seems like it's, it's almost be. almost over. Almost yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Let me be co completely controversial. Wait, that what? That wasn't let's you do, being completely it. controversial. <laughs> <laughs> and let's now, see. and now, let me talk about something controversial. Yeah, now let's let's deliver the final blow. This will be horrible. Yeah, and let's do it. Let's let's do it. Absolutely. One more. I will tell you something. I can't remember one thing. The mainstream Islam that is understood and interpreted by Muslims is translated using Sahih Bukhari Hadith. Okay. So people study the Quran to support the narrative. Okay. In actual fact, they should study the Quran. To so come on. Thank you. Messages. Thank you for that discussion. Uh, for that point, it's a good point. Yeah. Maghrib. It's time to pray Maghrib. Now, now the question is this: Do you want to join us? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go pray Makhana Rahi. It's good talking to you. Yeah? I enjoy talking to you. I'll talk to you later on, yeah? Inshallah. Inshallah. Hey, that's it. Hey, you know what's crazy? He was about to give a third point and he said and now he was now he was gonna get controversial. Did you catch that? And then yeah, someone yeah. told him no, it's we got we gotta go. Isn't that crazy? He was about yeah. to he was about to say something <laughs> worse. I, I wonder what that what was the... going to be.
<laughs> we should message him. Hey, what was your third point going to be? We're, we really want to know. He, he, yeah, I, I messaged with him before. I messaged with him sometimes on Twitter. He reads my messages. Sometimes he responds. Lately, he didn't. He doesn't respond anymore because I asked him how in the world are you defending Andrew Tate, and then he he stopped responding. Was pro- so he, he probably stopped responding because he's too busy fanboying <laughs> for Andrew Tate, right? Maybe, probably, probably running interference. Oh probably. yeah, I should do. ask him. I should ask him. Uh, hey, can you tell me what that point was that you wanted to deliver? <laughs> <laughs> What's that third point? Um. <laughs> Oh, so uh, yeah, we need we do need to check out that hadith because so we we've heard we've heard what you can do according to the Quran, according to Muhammad Hijab, but we need to understand what it's like for if you actually do follow the hadith. What are the limitations uh, from the hadith? And so we have uh, you got Sahih al Bukhari in there. I do, I do. Uh, let me pull that up right now here. Uh, so, uh yeah, 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 yeah. all right let's go over here sahih buhari um you mean the one with green clothes yeah 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 yeah, yeah. got it right here got it right here um so th- i mean this is a gold mine right here so uh according to this 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 hadith um this report about uh muhammad and his companions it says uh Narrated by Ikrimah, Rafah divorced his wife, whereupon Abdurrahman bin Zubair al Qurazi married her. Uh, Aisha said that the lady came wearing a green veil and complained to her, to Aisha, of her husband and showed her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. Showed her a green spot on her skin caused by beating. It was the habit of ladies to support each other. So when Allah's messenger, peace be upon him, came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Aisha, the mother of the faithful, who learned Islam literally at the feet of Muhammad himself, said after seeing the impact Islam was having on women, Aisha was around pagans. She was around uh, Jewish women. She was around various types of women, and she could say, after seeing what Islam did, she could say that Muslim women were treated worse than pagan women. Yeah, let's repeat this. It was the habit of ladies to support each other. So when Allah's messenger came, Aisha said, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. Yep. Her skin is greener than her clothes. Can you imagine that her skin was she's got a she she's got a green veil on, and Aisha says her skin's greener. <laughs> her yeah, skin's yeah, even yeah. greener. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When Abdul Rahman heard that his wife had gone to the Prophet, he came with his two sons from another wife. She said, By Allah, I have done no wrong to him, but he's imp- impotent and is as useless to me as this, holding and sh- showing the fringe of her garment. So 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 she she's she's sitting there with like you know look he's as useless to me as like this this is him this is my husband can't do anything with that. <laughs> um, Abdul Rahman said, "By Allah, O Allah's messenger, she has told a lie. I am very strong and can satisfy her, but she is disobedient and wants to go back to Rifah." Allah's messenger said to her, "If that is your intention, then know that it is unlawful for you to remarry Rifah unless Abdul Rahman has had, has had sexual intercourse with you." So, yeah, first he has to have sex with you, and then you can. Yeah, possibly. I mean, by the way, notice how messed up this is, right? So uh, if anyone's new to this, uh, in Islam, <laughs> if you divorce a man and then marry another guy, you can't go back to the former guy without having sex uh, with with the new guy first. But look at what she's saying. She's saying he's impotent. I can't have sex with him. I can't have sex with this guy who beats me until my skin turns green. And Muhammad says, well, if you really just want to go back to Rifah, then you can't because you can't you can't go back to Rifat unless you had sex with your new husband. And according to you, he's impotent. So too bad. You can't go back to Rifat. Just sit around getting beat by this guy who beats you until your skin turns green. Sorry. If you're if you're if you're serious about him being impotent, you're stuck. You can't go back to Rifat. And then yeah. that's. <laughs> Then the Prophet saw two boys with Abdul Rahman and asked him, are these your sons? On that, Abdul Rahman said, yes. The Prophet said, you claim what you claim, that he is impotent, but by Allah, these boys resemble him as a crow resembles a crow. So um, 
very it's very interesting to just deconceptualize and to imagine the situation where a woman comes in complaining very upset scared that her skin is a bruised green according to aisha aisha is there when the woman comes in when the woman complains that her husband uh, is beating her aisha who is the mother of the believers the most trusted source of hadith uh the beloved child bride of muhammad says uh i have not seen says oh allah's messenger i have not seen any woman who has who suffers more than the believing women this woman is being beaten brutally her husband is beating the hell out of her and muhammad's response is well why uh he says that you want to go back to your ex-wife well you first you have to have sex with him that's his response that's muhammad's response to the situation <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant, uh, brilliant stuff. So notice, <laughs> why did we bring this up? Muhammad had no problem with this man beating his wife until her skin turned gray. His, his concern was, well, who's right here? And he's siding with the man saying, hey, you're saying he's impotent, but look, he's got sons from a, from a, different, from a different wife, and therefore you're wrong. Now, of course, this, this assumes that a person can't become impotent. Yeah. Like you can't, you can't go through life and then become impotent. Um, but, you know, she's saying he's impotent. He's saying he's not. It's a disagreement. But Muhammad is, notice what Muhammad is saying. Because this is, this is evil, but brilliant. It's, hey, you're saying he's impotent. If you act, if you stick with that claim, then you, you can't go back to your previous husband. Because you 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 can't have sex with this guy, which means you can't go back to your previous husband. Um, so if you're telling the truth, too bad. Get used to a beating. But if you're if you're wrong, if you're lying and he's telling the truth and he's not impotent, then you deserve to be beaten. Like what what, what are you complaining about? You're you're talking trash about your husband, talking about him being impotent. You're walking around saying he's impotent. How dare you? No wonder he's beating you. No no wonder he's beating you until your skin turns green. Yeah. And so either either way, man, this sucks for this woman. Yeah, yeah. That's I wonder why I want I wonder why he why he needs to be uh potent to get to get over with with the sexual interaction. I mean, different groups around the world have found different solutions to that. Like uh the Mormons. Anyway, so uh we wanted to talk about uh different hadith as well related to this issue. Um, like here, we have I believe you wanted to talk about the one where uh, the shoving takes place and the translation. Well, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the only the only point there is, uh, yeah, the only point there is they're changing the translations. Yeah. yeah so he, he in this in this hadith, it used to say that that um, Muhammad went outside and Aisha was inside. Aisha went uh, outside looking uh, for him and was then out of breath. He saw her. He came back uh, home, said, um, "You were the black shape I saw in front of me." I said yes. She said he gave me a shove in the chest that hurt me. Uh, it, this used to say um, he, he hit me in my me. chest, which caused me pain. Yeah, he struck yeah. me in the chest, which caused me pain. Yeah, but this this translation has been changed here into shove on this website, uh, which is which is very very interesting. Yeah, gave me a shove in the chest, but notice he still hurt her, right? So whatever yeah. whatever this whatever the shove was, I mean, keep keep in mind if you just go like that, that's not that's not going to hurt someone, right? So you have to kind of. I mean, you're doing at least you're doing at least that in your wife. So I don't know. I consider that a a, a hit if you're actually hurting her with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, was, yeah, but but the point the point here is um. Uh, so anyway, the point the point here was you know hijab was just taking it as granted that Muhammad never hit his wives. Uh, you do have some reason to think that he hit his wife, and it, keep in mind, according to the Quran. He would certainly be justified in hitting his wives because the the Quran al definitely allows that. And so, well, you know what I find very funny. Uh, one very interesting thing to add here is so we're talking about wife beating, but here is an here is a, a hadith that I have on my mind that is very interesting, where um, according to this hadith, <clears throat> Muhammad, um, you know, is is married to these uh, different women, uh, Aisha and Hafsa, for example. Aisha is the daughter of Abu Bakr. Mm -hmm. Hafsa is the daughter of, of Omar, and um, in this hadith, they have a you know they have a problem with uh, with the prophet. And in this hadith, Abu Bakr gets up. It says Abu Bakr uh, then got up and went to Aisha and slapped her on the neck. 
And Omar stood up before Hafsa and slapped her, saying, you ask Allah's messenger of something which he does not possess. So here in this in a situation, you see that the <laughs> that, yeah. that the that the fathers here actually yeah. go to them and and hit them. Yeah, these are, keep, keep, it, keep in mind, these are Muhammad's wives being slapped yeah. around by other companions of Muhammad. They're being, yeah. which is weird. I can't, I mean, my wife's got a dad, nice guy. I cannot imagine sitting there while he slaps around my wife. What, what, yeah. what, I can't imagine so the holy, the holy prophet nice Muhammad, dad yeah. slapping her around in front of me. Yeah, the prophet Muhammad, the holy prophet Muhammad, is married to these to these uh, women among others, and uh, their dads just come here and they uh, they slap them, they they beat them, and say, "How dare you ask him things that he doesn't want to do or that he doesn't possess?" So uh, we're, we're talking about wife beating, and here we have an obvious case of their 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 fathers as authorities coming and beating them as they are. Uh, already married to this guy. Why would it be so strange to imagine that yeah. uh, people would beat their wives? Yeah. Um, so anyway, point is, uh, everyone's slapping around Muhammad's wives. Yeah, yeah. Stop beating Muhammad's wives. Pretty, man. pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad. Stuff. Pretty, pretty bad stuff. Stop beating up Muhammad's wives. Right. So yeah. So so now now we know now now we know like what you can now we know what you could do like if you had a. <laughs> What? <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> go ahead go ahead so i mean i mean to, to keep in mind because people need to know what hijab is saying right here so, so imagine <laughs> imagine this is your imagine this is your wife ladies and gentlemen uh so imagine this imagine i'm a uh so notice that there, there are two types of, there are two types of muslims according to muhammad hijab right there there are the the proper muslims the ones who understand that you know they have to interpret the, the claims of the quran um in light of the hadith and so hijab interprets the hadith as saying if this is my wife i would have to wait till she's nine i have to wait until she's nine to have sex with her when if i were quran only i would read surah you know uh, surah 65 verse 4 and say hey you know i, I can marry this girl as a as a five-year-old right she could this could be a five-year-old you're talking pre-K, right? You're not even kindergarten, right? Pre-K five, right? That's before kindergarten. So this is pre-K five, or you know that could be that could be the, the beginning of kindergarten. But uh, this is a pre-K girl th that you can actually marry, and so he's saying that's bad enough. Thinking that you could marry this little girl. Oh look! Oh, I want to go play in the sandbox. No, you're gonna marry me. No, I'm gonna play on my swing. <laughs> no, no, no. You're getting married, and I'm taking you back to my house. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I can have sex with you. You, you know, you're, you're, you're five, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Go ahead. Go ahead. And so hijab is, so is, hijab, is drawing a, hijab is drawing a distinction between Muslims who would only marry this girl once she's nine and the Quran only Muslims who would have no problem marrying a five-year-old. But then in addition to that, we never got the final point, but he was making another horrifying point. That what if what if this girl's disobedient? What if it, it's going to be different situations? Because on the one hand, it's going to be a nine-year-old who's disobedient, and if you're Quran only, it could be a five-year-old girl. So she goes off to you know she goes off to pre-K five, she goes off to pre-K five or to kindergarten and disobeys you, and ah, now I have to implement Surah four verse thirty-four on you. How dare you? How dare you not wear a proper hijab when you're going to when you're going to pre-k how dare you right <laughs> and so what hijab is pointing out is that if you're if you're uh you know an, an orthodox muslim and you believe in the hadith one she's going to be nine so she's going to be in like third grade not it's going to be a third grader uh and then when you say what could i do to her you have to go with what you find in the hadith that you're allowed to do so you're allowed to beat her until her skin turns green. You're allowed to slap. I mean, we see uh, Abu Bakr and and uh, you know Umar and so on slapping slapping them around and stuff. So you be able to you know shut up. How dare you? How dare you? You ah, how dare you not wear that? How dare you? Right? But it's it's going to be stuff like that, right? You're not you're not doing like you're not like chopping her head off or anything. You're just you know how ah, how dare you disobey me? How dare you? You you said what about Top G? You said you don't like Top G. <laughs> You say you don't like Andrew Tate? How dare you? <laughs> shut up! Shut up! Shut up! How dare you? Shut up! Don't you ever say anything about Top G again? That's what you'd be like, right? And you could do this until her skin 
is no longer this light brown. It's actually green, right? You, you beat her until her skin turned green. Totally fine, according to the Hadith. <laughs> <laughs> So that, that's orthodox Islam. You can beat her until her skin turns green. That's what hijab is defending. And there are Muslims who don't want to have to deal with hadiths about a woman being beaten until her skin turned green and, you know, Muhammad having sex with a nine-year-old girl. So they say, keep us away from those books. We'll just, we'll, we'll just go with the Quran. That'll save us from embarrassment. And hijab says, no. That is not what happens, because if you just go with the Quran, now instead of being nine, she's five. She is pre-K. She is pre-K or she's beginning of a beginning of kindergarten. But now you're dealing with a five-year-old. So what do you do with the five-year-old? Well, um, let's suppose she made fun of you. She went to her little, you know, her little kindergarten and she said, my husband is impotent. He's as useless to me. <laughs> He's as useless to me as this sock, right? Um. And, and so you say, okay, now I warned you for that, right? And then she 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 goes to kindergarten again or pre-K, whatever she's going to, and she comes back and up, oh, she wasn't, she's not wearing her, she's not wearing her her hijab properly. So now I have to escalate, right? I have to escalate. So I say, you dirty little whore, you get into a separate <laughs> bed. No, you get into your crib. You get into your crib and the other, no sleeping in my bed. You go back to your crib. You go back to your crib where you belong. And so she goes off to her crib and so on. But then she goes, she she keeps going, she keeps going to pre-K or kindergarten and causing trouble. And then that's when she does it. She goes, she's talking to her little friends and she says, uh, uh, I think Andrew Tate is, is a bad influence on Muslim men because now they think they can just go around beating us until we become their webcam girls. And then she comes home and notice now you're already on stage three. You're already on stage three. He already warned her. He, he already he, he already warned her for saying he's impotent. Then he banished her to a separate bed. Um, be, for not wearing her job properly. And then on top of all that, he dishonored and disgraced top G. Now, what do you do? Not according to me, <laughs> not according to me, you're Quran only Muslim. What do you do as a Quran only Muslim? Not according to me, not according to AP, according to Muhammad Hijab. What do you do? He says, well, if you're an aggressive person like him, then you would conclude, you would conclude that strike includes up to, it's up to and including chopping her head off the way you would do an enemy in battle, right? So according to hijab, hey, three strikes and you're out. Look, this is your third strike. How dare you? How dare you? You think I'm going to beat you? Wrong. So, you know, what are you going to do here? You're going to, uh, <laughs> you get, nah, that's not right. <laughs> but I, I want, I want to quickly add, this what? is not what we are advocating. This is not what we are saying. This is how we are interpreting what Muhammad hijab says. And that's a problem. Yeah, that, yeah. This is yeah. So this is not us, ladies and gentlemen. We think, just to be clear, we think this is awful. We think this is bad. But this is what hijab is saying that Quran only Muslims can conclude is halal. So you know, you can you you've got a matter of fact. That's a that's a little too scary. It's uh here we go. There's a hacksaw. <laughs> How dare you? You think I'm going to give you a quick slice? Wrong. We're going to make this nice and slow with this hacksaw. Right? That's, that's not good enough either. Oh you got to do it D. Wood style, man. You got to do it. You got to do it D. Wood style. I'll show you what you're messing with. How dare, how dare you? You think you can mess with me? You think you can dishonor me? How dare you think you can do that? <laughs> I don't even know if I should do this on camera. <laughs> How dare you think you can talk to me like that? Oh, hey, David, 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 stop, stop, stop. Don't stop. do it. What do you don't mean? Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> what don't. do you mean? I'm, I'm gone Quran only, man. What do you think I'm going to do? Don't, don't, don't do it. This is, this is too much. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> No, Hijab says, Hijab says, Hijab says, this is what I have to do because I'm Quran only. David, but don't do it. David, no. If I just believe, if I just believe, if I just believe in the Quran, Allah's perfect eternal speech, this is what I get. How dare you say that about Top G? I'll show you. Oh, no, 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 David. Oh, yeah, how dare you? <laughs> Oh, 
Oh my god. You know your oh, faces. Oh. I'll teach you a lesson. Oh. I'll teach you. You can now you know. Now ladies, you know. ladies and gentlemen. You know not to mess with the top G. Not to mess we with the to... top G. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you say that about him? How dare you? <laughs> Hello, Wipers! <laughs> Hello, Wipers! You see? You see what you get? What? <laughs> I'm gonna hang this up in the nursery school. <laughs> what? What? What is on your face? <laughs> it's bear blood. <laughs> And now all your other wives, I mean, my, all my other wives will know. And this will oh. be a warning to all you other girls. How is this real? Top G! <laughs> Top G! What? What? Right. Uh, Hang oh this boy. up right here. <laughs> now you know. Now you know. Oh, boy. All this right. This, this will probably get taken down. <laughs> hey, 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 by, the, by the way, you know you know what's funny? <laughs> Wait, what in the world just happened? <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? Like, we've got all these guys praying that, like, we die and we get diseases. You remember that? They were, like, call, like Ali Dawa was calling for Muslims to pray for us to die and get sick and stuff. But, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got my tools sitting around. Like, like I always tie up the safety. There's a safety on here. I've got that. I've got it tied off. So there's not the safety. But, I mean, I'm. I mean, all the stupid stuff I do with it. Like, I really like feel like I could like sort of shave gently with this. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, wait, wait, hey, David, what what is on your face? Seriously, dude, what's on your face? It's bear blood. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I didn't accidentally. I didn't accidentally kill myself. I got what, some. What, I got some what, fake blood. Did you, what did you put on your face? Oh wait, wait, wait. Hey, hey, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Ready? What? Here you go. <laughs> Uh, uh, listen, I'll give Where, where's David Wood and the apostate prophet when I've been attacked? Uh, let me tell you what happened, ladies and gentlemen. I was driving my car down the street, and then an Islamophobe came up to me. And he said, I know you from your brilliant Dawah videos, and you're converting too many people. And so, look at what he did to me. He, he stabbed me. And where, where are David Wood and the apostate prophet? <laughs> Well, the Islamophobia never ends. But just, just keep in mind, just keep in mind, AP. It's good because we got the guy. We got him. We got him. The cops got him. Yes, I gave them the information, and they got the video. And and this guy's already in jail. He's already in jail. Andrew Tate saw him while he was locked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wonderful conclusion. Wow. Wow. This just happened. This just ah! happened. <laughs> the Islamophobes got me. Ah! <laughs> oh. And where is AP to condemn this? <laughs> wow, man. What a religion, man. These are the champions of Dawa. These are the these are the champions of Dawa, man. So what happened here tonight? What happened here tonight is a coming together of <laughs> a real world and an unimaginable weird universe, which was introduced to us by a gentleman by the name of Mohammed Hijab. We are merely here to witness it come to life in the form of David Wood, who has some strange blood-like thing on his face. It's fake blood. And, and, and this, but this is like, notice, it's more realistic than what we saw on Sheikh Uthman, right? This, That's this, true. Look, That's this true. looks more like more like real blood than That's what true. was smeared on his uh, falb, I guess. That, 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 that is... I... <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I'm totally. I'm, out of I'm looking at this like, man, I gotta. Oh boy. Uh... You see? <laughs> you see what you get? You see what you get when you mess with the hawk, the hawk and the hikma. 
We've got the huck. We've got the huck and the hikma. We've got the huck and the hikma. This is what you get. This is what you get. I, I wonder if Mohammed Hijab is watching this live again. Don't mess with the huck and the hikma. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This happened. This is a, a perfect video, a perfect illustration of exactly uh, what the Quran says, according to Muhammad Hijab. I think people should take this. And... Yeah, notice, uh, notice apart apart from these, the minor reenactment where this is what he said, this is all what he was saying, right? Ladies and gentlemen, th what, is, is that us saying that if you just read the Quran, you think you could do this? You're, that was Muhammad Hijab, one of the greatest da'is, if not the greatest da'i of our generation saying this is what you get if you just read the Quran. And that's why you need him to in to interpret things for you. Wow. Okay, I now, I now need to make sure that this live stream will stay safe. <laughs> and maybe I need to add one I need, I need to add some more warnings as to You can put uh, a warn you can put a warning in the title and in the uh, and in the description box, but there's nothing warning. here that violates. I mean, this at the end of the day, this what is us. Warning. This Explicit is us. Content. This is us. I mean, think, you know, that was a, that was a, a hijab, a Muhammad hijab video. That's fine. We criticize it. <laughs> and then we're the ones, in, we're the ones in danger. Not the guy who's saying, ah, you just read the Quran. You're thinking you marry a five-year-old and chop her head off. Omar al said, if you want him to see, actually invite him. I, I would love to invite Muhammad hijab if he actually joined this, uh, this, this channel in a live stream. I don't think he would. I actually haven't, haven't done that before. We uh, only challenged each other and then he backed out. So maybe just, I should invite him. Just, Totally, totally straightforward here. Muhammad Hijab, if you'd like to explain more about the problems of Quran only Islam, <laughs> you're welcome anytime to join us right here. Uh, if, matter of fact, you just say what Quran only Islam entails, I'll reenact it. I'll do the I'll do the reenactments for you. <laughs> I bet he would love that. If you want to explain more about the dangers of reading the Quran, please join us and uh join us live so we can we can discuss and talk about it together. <laughs> uh david are you still in the mood to read a few super chats here sure 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 sure. unless you are going to go on. i was i was scared for a for a second that you will some that an accident is going to happen you will i don't know get rid of your or, or oh it could I, I mean i'm sitting there i'm sitting there with this uh, i'm sitting there with this power saw and like it, it kept the it kept the 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 stuffing kept getting caught it and it kept jamming oh <laughs> and, uh, could, have, could have taken some fingers off but hey these are the risks i take it would have been good for, for videos it would have been good for the live stream. It would have been good for the views. Muslims would have loved that. Yeah. Islamophobe yeah. loses three fingers in making fun of Muhammad. Yeah. It um, would be a good stream. I don't know. Yeah. 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 It would be. It would be worth it. Uh, SGT four eight five says, "Where was Allah before the Quran? It seems that He doesn't make any effort to reach humanity. What is the Muslim explanation for this? Before the Quran, I bet you mean. Um, uh, what?" They say is that there was a um, a period of uncertainty where people did not have a proper guidance. But what the Quran actually says is that uh, is that the Jews and the Christians had their scripture, which they were just supposed to follow, and they were supposed to follow the scripture even after the Quran initially uh, came to them, and that uh, Arabs would be the last ones to receive a scripture from Allah in their own language. And the implications by of Muhammad were that uh, soon the end would come. So everybody received their scripture. Don't worry. And lots of prophets, according to Muhammad, were sent. <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> With the, the, the stare that you just gave. Lots of uh, prophets were, like thousands of prophets were sent to all humanity long before, but somehow none of them uh, left any trace. They all failed because they were all a bunch of losers with a terrible plan. <laughs> Dude. But that is what's that is the interpretation here. There's, uh, there's your thumbnail. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's do this solo layout here. Now do it again. Oh, what's the thumbnail? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. The real dangers of Quran only Islam. <laughs> Introduced by Muhammad Hijab. Um, Anton Gomez said, I heard Islam is superior to Christianity because the Quran says you have to be nice to parents. The Ten Commandments only say honor parents' opinions. Uh, yeah, because the Ten Commandments are the only thing in the Bible. Thank you. <laughs> 
Bible stops there, Ten Commandments. Yeah, uh, I think that's a, that's a very, very, very weird way of defining superiority, but mm -hmm. uh, that's very strange. I don't know what else to say about it. She kills, but I appreciate it. She kills a man said, check out more hijab's latest video on Hamza Yusuf. Uh, I think you're talking about Hamza. Hamza I don't know what he said, but I would guess it's something negative, right? Like there's something wrong with Hamza Yusuf? the the i we, we're talking about his video about the scotland first minister hamza yusuf right oh okay oh okay that's not hamza yeah that's got a different spelling to it that's yeah the, uh, yeah that's that guy who what what was he elected to he, he's he's elected prime minister or something first first minister of scotland uh and now celebrated by many people as the first muslim uh, first minister of scotland mm -hmm. it's kind of equivalent to, to prime minister i guess in scotland terms mm -hmm. but Traditionalist Muslims like Muhammad Hijab have denounced the guy, and Muhammad Hijab made a video in which he explicitly said that that guy is not a Muslim. He has officially left Islam. He has left the folds of Islam because he's a he's a kafir by changing the laws and the morals of humanity and denying that uh, certain things are like LGBTQ are are sin are a sin because he said he said something like when he was asked about it he said that uh that he, i think he said that there is nothing wrong with it and he has his own personal beliefs which he doesn't want to mix into his politics and as a result of that um Mohammed Hijab and many others have argued that saying that is an act of disbelief which is why that guy is not a Muslim and Muslims should denounce him and reject him and not celebrate him as a Muslim politician and I of course immediately took the opportunity to celebrate this as the first ex-Muslim uh politician and ex-Muslim first minister of Scotland oh that's funny yeah so did you make a video about that I will. I will. Oh, that, that is a good. The first, yes, yeah, the first <laughs> ex-Muslim, <laughs> ex-Muslim leader. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, that is that, that is a that is an ongoing problem, though. That uh, it's like we're we point out all these problems with Islam, and then the response is, ah, but look at all these peaceful, tolerant Muslims, not realizing that if Islam spreads to the point where uh, where you where these guys are totally outnumbered by people like a job your your peace and tolerance just went out the window they'll treat they'll treat you like a like a kafir and and, and as a as an apostate yep right so yep. your child is going to become an apostate your child is going to become an apostate help me <laughs> <laughs> uh where is shaky booty i actually had a chat with shaky booty uh recently he's planning on reacting to uh andrew tate uh should be should yeah. be here soon. is it he's at a dawa conference i think yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, Native Atheist said, hi, AP and Dave. Hello, thank you. Uh, hello. Yeah, I need more atheists here uh, who support this channel and donate, like, I don't know, $5,000 per super chat. You can't. Atheists are stingy. Channel. They're all basically Scrooge. To keep this channel uh, up and big and stuff, yeah. Uh, Emperor2000 said, super sticker. Uh, he sent a super sticker. I don't know what it looks like, but I bet it's very nice. It says, good luck. They're very nice. Thank you. Stop Scamming Man said, Ibn Sark's 8th century bio of Muhammad says, Aisha got criticized for how she positioned Muhammad when he died. Aisha said she was blameless on account of her extreme youth at the time. Lies! She was 50! <laughs> Since we could yeah. just since we could just make things up according to uh, many Muslims in the West, uh, she was fifty. She was an old lady. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did uh, some recent things that I shared with the public, and I bet you saw it too. I think yeah, you shared it. Where I made an AI illustration of what Aisha may have looked like in real life, mm -hmm. uh, which I should also share as a video quite soon, just to give people the idea of Muhammad's marriage to a child. And bringing the actual truth, the reality, closer to everybody. And next super chat says uh, by Mariana. Mariana is a super sticker which I do not see again, but it says something like behind the scenes. That's people have already Thanks. seen. People have already seen the super stickers. As, yeah, I don't see as them. They were coming in. Yeah, AF Iron said it's not easy being green. Kermit, Bruce Banner, and Aisha. <laughs> Is, is, is that a, is that a song from the that's a song it's not easy being green <laughs> that is very dark now combined with <laughs> oh yeah we got to do parody green. we got to do parody oh, songs boy. where where oh, it's boy. aisha it's aisha singing it ain't easy being green beside her uh... 
Oh, we could do a musical like that. Oh, a life of Muhammad that movie. That's in it. That's a musical. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Spawn said, David, when will you leave Christianity? You might as well be Muslim because Islam makes more sense because everything is magical in it. You want to end up like CP. What? What the heck? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, for, first, 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 say something coherent, uh, Spawn, and then tell me to Wait, leave Christianity. You might as well be Muslim because Islam makes more sense because everything everything's is magical. magical in it. It's it makes more sense because everything's magical. And I don't so, understand. Do I want to? Yeah, I don't no, understand. No wonder this guy's an atheist. <laughs> completely, <laughs> completely incoherent thinking. Can't even spell. <laughs> Typical atheist. Atheists are actually actually the best spellers in the world. Uh, They're the best of spellers. Best of spellers, yeah. Um, Apollos Christian Apologetics said David about to about to slit the throat of the teddy bear. There about to, but he did he did much worse. Yeah, yeah, I chopped that thing's whole head off. He did much worse. You know, it's funny. I recently, I think, I think last night I had a dream, and for some reason, I saw, I had, I saw David Wood in my dream, life, no, uh, making a video, publishing a video where he reviews a video game, and a racing game, and comments on it like a dorky guy who is who has no idea about video games at all, and people were loving it, and at the same time, you were playing some some old music. Or something, and I thought, hey, that's a good idea. So, I, and then I woke up, and I, and I thought, oh, that was just a dream, but that's actually a very good idea. So, well, it's, uh, I mean, you got to be I to pitch it to you. You got to be careful with dreams. I mean, that's how Muhammad started off with Aisha. Remember, um, but uh, you know, hey, you know, what's funny. <laughs> So AP is now dreaming about uh, <laughs> um, uh, we, a, a long time ago. We, me and Vocab were going to start a uh, Prophet Muhammad gaming channel. <laughs> it's going to be Muhammad <laughs> playing video games. Where you see Muhammad in the corner and he's playing video games. Uh, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. That'd he be was going to be doing Minecraft and uh, yeah. Anyway, and, be, and build the Kaaba in Minecraft. Yeah. Like like destiny. Uh, super chats, super chats. Oh yeah, okay. Somebody here. Yeah, yeah. more super chats. Uh, w X X W L Z X X said, "What is the future of Dawa? Dawa is dead, and Dawa is going to die." Um, by that, we are I would referring to uh, not a person. Uh, for those who do not see the context here, but to Dawa as an activity of inviting people to Islam, uh, it will of course naturally uh, fight its death and it will die. Yeah, that's my prediction as a prophet. What do you say, David? Wrong. Top G is back. Top G is going to save Islam and do lots of Dawa. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the funniest thing, right? Uh, where. You expect the Muslims to encourage each other to be a better example and make people like Islam in a better way. And and, and as Jordan Peterson said, uh, you present yourself in such an admirable way that people willingly come to your religion. And what do they do? Andrew Tate becomes Tater. a new face of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> now you'll never criticize us again because we got the tater. Yeah, yeah. Common Sense said, have you heard ISIS, ISIS baby by Rukka Rukka Ali? No, that sounds no. funny though. That's good, yeah. Seed of Iblis said, this video is sponsored by Build a Bear. Uh, <laughs> and his promise said, my two favorite fellows, and I'm proud of that. Can you say that? We're proud of that. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, logistically said, do you hate on Islam because it's the fastest growing religion in the world and you are scared of the day it will be number one? You speak with so much hate. It's sad. Thank you for $5. Thank uh, you for the super chat. We'll thank use you it for, for our, our awesome work. Yes, yes. Uh, and to answer your question, uh, do you hate on Islam because it's the fastest growing religion? Yes. Uh, <laughs> obviously why why else would i why else would anybody hate i mean that yeah the thing is you can actually look into the reasons that islam is growing um yeah. and then you start getting into why people hate it so much because it's not the fastest growing because of uh uh conversions or something like that it's because of uh, birth rates in muslim so as far as the global numbers increasing the dominant factor is birth rates because of the impact that islam has on women right it's, it's mm -hmm. hey you're, we're, we're going to marry you when you're 10 or 11 and turn you into a, a baby making machine. 
And by the time, you know, uh, girls in the West will be finishing school and college, you know, the Muslim girl has five or six kids already. And then so the numbers explode. So that's why Islam's uh, growing as far as its global numbers. Why Islam is growing in the West is because Islam does a really terrible job at making countries where anyone wants to live. So Muslims want to leave their Muslim countries as far uh, get, get as far away from them as they can, as fast as they can. So they come to the West. So Islam's growing rapidly. Why? Islam does makes places that no one wants to live in. And Islam treats women like there's nothing, there's nothing more than, than baby making machines. And so now you're getting into some of the reasons why we have a problem with, uh, with Islam, but there's like a million more. Yeah. I made a video. I made several videos. I think I made two videos about that specific question about whether Islam is the fastest growing religion or not. One of those videos I, I, I think was called the fastest breeding religion. And I used credible sources, including from the researchers that uh, initially proposed the idea that Islam is the fastest growing religion and uh, related researches which show that Islam is not the fastest growing religion because of, uh, or it's not growing this rapidly because of conversion. It is growing because of uh, birth rates and young age. And they even included certain um, certain studies which show that, 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 that if uh, families in a certain country, um, a, a Muslim family and a Christian family in a certain country and environment, if they live on the same street, the average Muslim family will have more children, a significantly higher number of children than the Christian family, even in uh, much less developed countries, because uh, it is something within within Islam and within the Islamic culture and teaching that uh, simply reduces women to that role and doesn't give them any any other you know way to way to thrive. They are just baby making machines, and and Islam constantly praises um, this idea of 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 populating and becoming crowded. And Muhammad, according to the Hadith, says, "I will be, I will be, you know, I will, I will be happy and proud of my of the the great the the, the size, the number of my ummah, of my community." Yeah, so, um, uh, I, I know. I had a friend from a. <clears throat> This was years ago, but uh, he was from Lebanon, and very recently, Lebanon was a more uh, uh, a a uh, majority Christian country, mm -hmm. and now it's Muslim majority. And I was like, "Hey, what happened there?" He goes, "Christians were Christians were focused on having uh, you know a couple of kids and making sure their kids got good educations and good jobs and had good careers and stuff like that." And he says, "Muslim Muslims were just having babies." And then, and then, and then that's how you take over an entire country. Interesting stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I, I talked about uh, other things before, like, um, I don't know. I've, I lived in Turkey. I, uh, have been to some other Muslim countries, you know, the culture, you know, the culture of, of, of you, you have, you know, the ideas that people have about living in their own countries versus living in non Islamic countries. I mean, I can just give an example of Turkey, which is, uh, which is not even as backward and underdeveloped and, and unbearable as many other Muslim countries. And in Turkey, I'm I'm not exaggerating. If you went to a town square in the average Turkish city and said, I have free passports, free visas to Europe, grab this and you can travel to Europe and you can live there. People would, there would be a stampede. People would just... <laughs> People would people would trample each other <clears throat> to get a visa, to get a permission to leave that country and to go to Europe because people love it. People love the West. People want to come to the West because their own countries are not very bearable, are not very good, not very fruitful. That's why th there are so many people who 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 flock to the West. Nab Nabil said. Uh, Nabil told me this is when this is when he was still a Muslim. He took a trip to uh, to Pakistan, and he told me, he told me when he got back, he said. Uh, people were offering to buy his passport from him. But he said they were, they were offering like tens of thousands of American dollars. Mm -hmm. Just just get, just give your passport. Then you'll, you know, you'll go to the embassy and say you lost your passport and stuff like that. But after, after we've already used your passport and stuff. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that is it. Some people are asking what is with uh, David Wood's face. You're he, gonna to, uh, you're gonna have to go back and watch it. Yeah, you're gonna have to back go back and watch it. David uh, did some terrible things to his face. Uh, yeah. Uh, have you heard of this and this? Almost died. Oh, here, Apollo's Christian Apollo said almost died from 2000 and died from 2019 stroke and wanted my last moments to see David eat Surah Al Fatiha next time on real deathbed. This moment will be it instead. Oh, okay. 
yeah, almost died in. Uh, okay, died from a stroke in 2019 and wanted my last moments to see David Eats. Okay, yeah, next next uh, wish, the next time in your deathbed could be this. That's good. That's solid. Mm -hmm. That's solid. <laughs> uh where is your bugatti boy i don't know why i marked this comment uh it's, love it's they've already given you the correct pronunciation it's bugatti 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 oh david um I'm, I'm saying david but andrew tate was released from from detention which however does not mean contrary to what some people think because they don't even follow the news properly surrounding their heroes which does not mean that the case against him has been dropped it just means that his location changed he's no longer in detention in a cell he's now under house arrest and everything else the investigation uh, still continues against him yeah. by the department of terrorism and organized crime and yeah. it continues that long because they are probably preparing a huge 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 case against andrew tate and collecting as much evidence as possible for which he was initially brought into detention so that they could raid and collect everything possible before it could be removed to then gather enough evidence so yeah and, and guys uh, because there's lots of misinformation about how everything works and so on uh the idea is you know here in i don't know how things work in every other country in, in the united states you uh they have to they have to tell you what your your charges are pretty darn mm -hmm. quickly right you don't mm -hmm. you, you don't just lock someone up and then spend months and stuff like that and so uh it is a it is a kind of weird system they have that they could just lock you up while they're still investigating and keep you locked up without even saying, uh, you know, without even listing your charges, they can just keep you locked up. They have to renew it every 30 days. Um, but th their justification was in Tate's case, this is a guy who in his videos brags about having multiple passports for other countries. He brags about how he's able to bribe anyone who, you know, is going to come after him and so on. So they reasoned, okay, if we're investigating this guy, we need to keep him from running with one of his passports. We can't just tell him we're charging him and 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 let him be, you know, let him stay at home or something like that, because this guy could get out. And therefore, we're going to keep him locked up. And eventually, after several months, after a couple months, uh, and a, it went up for appeal. And then it was, hey, if you haven't charged him after these couple months, then then let him go on house arrest, and you could just you could just keep an eye on the house and make sure he doesn't bolt out of there. Uh, yeah. but, but you can't just keep this guy locked up forever without charging him. Let him be on house arrest until you charge him and then deal with it. Yeah. The funny thing is, um, the funny thing is this is how the law works in Romania. I'm pretty sure it is, uh, it is a case where, uh, due to the nature of the charges, um, there, it is an extraordinary situation where he's, uh, investigated for organized crime, which is, uh, yeah. more serious than just an irregular yeah. crime, which is why they can, uh, you know, hold him for uh, such an extended period of time while investigating everything that they seize, all his belongings. Yeah. Uh, and what's what's funny about this is um, he shouldn't be complaining about Romanian law. And nobody should be complaining about, because it was he himself yeah. who specifically, explicitly said that he went to Romania because the law is uh, different there because he can get away with things and he likes to be, he likes to have power and likes to, you know, uh, make use of corruption. It, he himself chose Romania specifically because of its, uh, of, of its law. So he, you know, he shouldn't be complaining about how things work. there. Yeah. Uh, and, and now, I mean, <laughs> basically Andrew by now has an idea of what they've got on him and what they're coming at him for. So if he knows he's going to get locked up for five or 10 years or more for what he's done, he's going to try and get out of that house and get to Dubai or something like that. You can, you can watch. It's, it's basically if he thinks he can, if he thinks he's going to beat it and be able to bribe his way out <clears> or <throat> intimidate the witnesses out of, uh, you know, into recanting or something like that, then he might stay there. But if he knows he's going to get some time, he's probably going to bolt. Where he'll, course, where he'll be the hero of Islam, wherever he goes. Of course, he's setting up the narrative here and saying they have nothing on me. I'm totally innocent. They're persecuting me. He's turning himself into a, into a hero here. He probably knows very well what the they have the on Matrix. him. The yeah. Matrix. The he Matrix. He probably knows Got very me. well what they have on him. And and lots of the stuff that they have on him is already public knowledge. Yeah, and, and, and it, was, it was so stupid, right? Like he knew they were coming after him. He knew they were investigating him. He knew that police were looking at it. I mean, one of his girls, one of his webcam girls, who's one of the enforcers, is a is a was it was a, a, a 
a, a former police officer who still had connections. He knew yeah. he knew they were coming for him. Um, so he knew it. And that's when he's like, guys, you know what the matrix is going to do? It considers me such a threat for my empowering message to young men that they're going to come along and they're going to throw me in jail on trumped up charges. You watch. He knows he's about to be arrested. So yeah, he's yeah. saying it. And then they would course, have, they were probably preparing the case anyway, and they wouldn't, they would have probably never allowed him to leave the country even prior to that. They would and then probably... I got, and then I got to see from 10,000 of his fans. Oh my goodness. Andrew Tate said this would happen. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone who knows they're about to be charged because they're being investigated and because they know what they've done and they know who's testifying against them can say, oh, they're about to come get me on trumped up charges. Yeah. yeah. And people, oh, wow, he, he must be a prophet. Yeah, just like Muhammad. That's how Muhammad made his prophecies. That's how Muhammad well, did his stuff. Yeah. People will do this. Look, it happened. How did he know it? Uh, but anyway, I will be very. I'm very excited to see uh, everything that will result and everything that will be brought against him in terms of actual charges uh, soon. But just from the fact that he was detained without charges for so long, while we got news of all his belongings and and his work stuff and everything was seized, you can probably assume that they weren't just sitting there and thinking, "Let's just let's just let this guy sit in here and not do anything." They were probably. And they probably still are preparing a very yeah, huge and, case of organized crime against him. Yeah, and 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 it, it's a situation where they know, hey, the the people who testify against him are webcam girls. It's going to be, it's going to be easy for the defense attorneys to point at them and saying, oh, they're just angry at him for you know because they got old and stuff like that, and now they're angry that they're not, and that's why they're coming after him, or he did. You know, he did this or something like this, and that's why they're lying. So it's a situation they know the defense is going to dis just try to discredit all the witnesses, and so they're just making they're probably making sure their case is as airtight as possible before uh, yep. before going after him. With that said, with that said, if he actually hasn't done what he's being accused of and the things he said in his videos. <laughs> my goodness i it's going to be awesome if he walks because uh again if he's done the stuff you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta face the music if he actually hasn't done this stuff this would be the one of the greatest days in the history of dawa if he is released and you know released from house arrest and gets to be the new champion of islam this dude will be more powerful more epic than hijab and ali dawa and sheikh uthman and hakikachu and all these guys combined this will be the this will be the <laughs> goal this will be the golden age of making fun of islam you watch but the funny thing is if it turns out that he actually didn't do the things that he himself uh said he did do on camera then um, it's, and if he, if he never walks, it will also turn out that he was just uh, talking a bunch of nonsense and depicting himself in a very childish way as a as a tough top G while not doing anything serious at all. Yeah, and, that, that, that's that, by the way, that's his defense in court. It's hey, the, the, <laughs> the, all the stuff I said in those videos, that's just me playing a character to dupe morons. It's, <laughs> that's his defense in court. His defense in court is all my fans are idiots who send me money because they think I'm I'm doing all this stuff that I'm not <clears> actually <throat> doing. I'm sitting there minding my own business. Well, they are idiots. I mean, they are idiots. That's true. That, that, that's true because um, the guy said very openly before, he openly very clearly said to his audience and to others that his business, which made him rich and successful, consisted of uh, hiring these, uh, luring these girls into becoming his 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 porn actresses and then talking to desperate lonely men online and duping them and scamming them basically uh he takes over he chats with the guys uh, pretends to be the girls sends them uh supposedly special messages just for them which he also sends to everybody else and uh tells them sob stories and basically scams them it's a complete scam that's what he says literally it's a complete scam then he goes out and is like, hey, guys, by the way, I scammed all these people, you know, so, such idiots, such morons. And by the way, if you want to uh, learn how to be as successful and rich as me, sign up to my course, pay $50 a month, and you can be just as great as me. And people without a second thought are like, wow, yeah, amazing. Here are my $50. Take it. Take my $50. Teach me your ways. The guy who just told to you explicitly that he that his greatest achievement is scamming people 
And then, and then, hey guys, I need a backup plan because the law is coming after me. I need, uh, I need a, I need to be able to run to another country. And oh, alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim now. I'm taking this super serious. Wow, the guy has a pure heart. Now he's a Muslim. That's awesome. This is awesome. <laughs> and, you, and of course, he's an honest man. Yeah. What, what else could you expect? Anyway. <clears throat> um, WWX said uh, Islamic birth rates are rapidly declining and some sources say apostasy is also increasing too. Worldwide Christianity is rapidly growing, especially Africa. Yeah, I would uh, contest some of the numbers and uh, statistics, statistics given here. But I would say um, it is generally known that um, progress decreases birth rates. And according to the research, Muslim societies are no exception to that. Yeah, as, as, as places modernize, yeah. then uh, birth rates decline. Yeah. Because, because all of a sudden, families have more opportunities to send their kids to school and things like that. And so you, you they don't end up having 15 kids. They end up having two or three kids. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's called family planning becomes a thing when societies modernize, which means... Uh, people start making reasonable decisions on how many children to have and uh, how to allocate their their resources and yeah yeah and and the the I mean the the numbers that Muslims are pointing out right the, it's it's this didn't come from us this comes from Muslims pointing out that uh, about a quarter and this was a few years ago maybe more now but about a quarter of young Muslims are leaving Islam yep. and so uh, and keep in mind that that's increasing that's increasing so there comes a point where it comes a point where the the uh, the the increase in the number of Muslims due to birth rates eventually get will eventually be canceled out by the number of Muslims leaving it, and that's when that's when you're going to see even more panic from the Dais. Andrew Tate, I don't think he's going to save you. He is not. I also um, there's this guy. I quickly just want to show a bit of this this guy. He made a he made a he made an interesting appeal. There's no audio, man. Oh, come on, man. What's Why wrong I... with you? You just Why ruined this... it. I ruined it. Uh, Have you uh... ever not ruined one of your own live streams? No. There we go. Assalamu alaikum. My heart is breaking. All brothers and sisters, my soul is aching. Brothers and sisters, did you know that so many people are leaving Islam every day? Why would anybody leave such a beautiful religion? Why would they choose to become a sick disbeliever instead? A'udhu Billah. Brothers and sisters, 100,000 Muslims are leaving Islam every single year. Over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. I'm telling you, this is serious stuff. This is not a joke. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. Yes, we say that there are 1.6 billion Muslims in the world and Islam is growing day by day. But the standard narrative has holes. And we are not proud of that. And we're not proud of that. Apostates are everywhere. They are among us. They are even people who memorize the Quran. They are copies of the Quran. The youth are full of doubts. Our youth are full of doubts. And we tell them, doubts? What doubts, man? Doubts? What doubts, man? Have some guts, be a man. Have some guts, be a man. But nobody is answering their questions. And nobody's answering their questions. We tell them to stop questioning and to stop being emotional. And we tell them to be a Chad. Be a Chad. You can do it. I believe in you. But instead, they choose to be bad. We've seen this happen, unfortunately. We've seen this happen to a lot of people. If it continues like this, your child is going to become an apostate. Your, your child is going to become an apostate. Imagine your child, your child, the child that you are raising could end up with the disbelievers, with the... Kufar and go to hellfire. Hellfire will want to swallow them. Hellfire will roast them. Roast them. Toast them. Toast them. Break them. Break them. Shake them. Shake them. Hellfire. Hellfire will annihilate them. Will annihilate them. And the rest of us will be watching. We'll be watching. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> we must act now. We must do something about this. And what you can do is to donate to our channel so that we can do something. May Allah keep us firm. Never let us go astray. May Allah keep our children firm. If we don't take constructive steps now, this is going to become an avalanche. It is going to become an avalanche. A tsunami. A tsunami. The apostates, they are everywhere. They don't make it public. They hide it. They are leading prayers. They are leading prayers. The they are still living the life of a religious Muslim. 
and they are still leading that life while simultaneously declaring their apostles. Brothers and sisters, if you feel as strongly about this as I do, then please donate to us and our cause. You can make a one-time donation or a monthly donation. Please be generous. Please give whatever you can so that we can take the responsibility and alhamdulillah spread apostasy. Donate now. Help now. You may even receive many gifts in heaven, in paradise, in Jannah. You can get a house next to me or next to some other very good looking man. <laughs> you have an opportunity right now on this Haram New Year. You can do something halal and donate your money was. So what are you waiting for? Donate now. Leave it to Sheikh Kabudi. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yep. That was powerful. That was very powerful. I wanted to, that was powerful. I wanted, I wanted to share this just to... <laughs> but I, I didn't think I would show the whole thing. I just to, <laughs> no, you should, play the, you, should play that every, you should play that every show. <laughs> By the way, we always point out that Ali Dawa can never state something accurately. Everything has to be twisted. But uh, like he yeah. couldn't even get that correct, right? It was a uh, oh, hundred thousand, a hundred thousand Muslims a year are leaving Islam. That was actually a Pew Research study in the United States. Oh yeah, a hundred thousand yeah. Muslims leaving Islam every year in the United States. That's not. That's not. You're not even talking about the rest of the world. So it's actually. Uh, it's actually significantly worse. So everyone, you definitely want to support Sheikh Yabudi because it's worse than the Dais let on. Absolutely. This is a. This was a very powerful message from Sheikh Yabudi, who is uh, the best best Islamic scholar out there, uh, hands down. And uh, and, and, when, and when you combine those things, when once we saw we saw the powerful message about. Quran only Muslim, Quran only Islam <laughs> from Muhammad Hijab, and and how you need you need uh you need to go to the Hadith to find out you know you just beat your wife until her skin turns green you don't chop her head off no so anyway the point is we, we've got this powerful message about Islam and what it really teaches and now you have this uh this appeal from Sheikh Yabudi but uh yeah 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 fantastic so donate to uh, <laughs> Sheikh Yabudi uh, which you can find down in the description to save apostasy pagan list said he's under house arrest awaiting his trial exactly that's what we said thank you uh leon said what is a sneako the tate wannabe oh yeah that's that's uh this that's some other youtuber youtuber or... guy who was banned from youtube who is now a new nazi and who is kind of the walmart brand andrew tate the yes. great value andrew tate yeah. Uh, Stefan Milievich said, hey, David, do you remind me of my neighbor from Romania? I'm going to eat garlic to protect myself. Stay, <laughs> stay away from Islam. Yeah. He's, he's trying to say that David looks like uh, a vampire. Dracula. A Dracula. Yeah. 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 Which is basically, which is actually based on a uh, real guy who was a pretty ruthless dude and who put a bunch of Ottoman soldiers on sticks and yeah. hung their heads on walls and stuff like that. He did this. <laughs> you want to see? You want to see? Ha-ha! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Harman said, love you guys from India. A big salute to your bravery. I understand the frustration of David. Even we are tired of dying from last 800 years. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, very I'm much. Not, I'm not frustrated though. David is not frustrated and he doesn't appreciate it either. So I just play someone who's frustrated in this live stream. Yep. Yep. That's true. That's true. All right. With that said, uh, I would like to thank everybody for joining this live stream. And I would say I'll see you again next time. Are, are we doing a live stream tomorrow? I didn't. We didn't really talk. Uh, about it. Yes, we will on my channel. We will. We will figure it out. Uh, as of right now, I am going to click over while they're still live over on uh, Reasoned Answers. So I'm going to jump over on Reasoned Answers. That's a bunch of that's a bunch of Christians having discussions with uh, people who call in. So we don't have to have all this atheist nonsense yeah. that we get when we're on AP's channel. It's boring stuff. Uh, for those who haven't noticed, we are doing this thing now where we uh, go live every Saturday and Sunday. On Saturdays, Saturday nights, we go live on my channel where we talk about uh, actually relevant, reasonable, good knowledge mm -hmm. stuff. On Sundays, we go live on David Wood's channel where we talk about uh, more boring stuff like mm -hmm. you know 
faith, religion, universe. I don't know. <laughs> but this is what we are doing. We're plugging those things together, and we have been doing this almost consistently, and we will keep doing this. And uh, you can join us tomorrow on David Wood's channel. And next week, we will be here again one more time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, with that said, is there anything else that you want to hear that you want to get off your chest, David? Uh, nope. Just check out uh, Reasoned Answers. That's where I will be. Uh, I will pro I'll probably go watch this. I was thinking I'd just click on it, but I'll probably wash the blood off real quick. But yeah, it should be over there in uh, just, three or four, three or four minutes. The, just join with the blood on your face. <laughs> no, I'm going to have to answer all kinds of questions and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny said, AP, debate Mohammed Tijab. Have you not... Have you not seen the history of us i have published a video about this called the end of mohammed hijab in which i explicitly explained that he himself offered the debate to me then backed out of it with different excuses i'm, I'm still waiting i don't know uh sarah michael Archer, i quickly want to read this ap any news on the epilepsy video brother rashid collab with david i have i was in contact with him i am going to make a video about mohammed's mental health quite soon is going to come soon. All right. Thanks, everybody. <clears throat> Have a fantastic day. Don't be, don't do what David did. Don't do this at home. Have mercy. Uh, be reasonable. Don't do that. And <laughs> as we leave, I want to leave you alone with one more final message. And that is stay, stay away from Quran only Islam. Yes. And Stay away from Islam. <laughs>